I'm working on that this week in practice. Normally, you don't see many blocked extra points, but against Northern Colorado, they had one blocked. Against Omaha, they had one blocked. It's something that you just don't see uh, breakdown too often, and the Bison have spent a lot of time on that. As you see, the herd ranked number three in the nation in NCAA Division II football coming out on the field. The turf, Rod, you and I were down there. It's really in pretty good shape. No, definitely in great shape. Uh, surprising, uh, uh, you know, you look down, the grass is still green, it's very plush, uh, it is wet, it's going to get torn up a little today, there's no doubt about that, especially if uh, these two ball clubs uh, spend most of the first half between the 30s, uh, they could chew up the middle of the field pretty good, because it is getting soggy, the rain is still coming down, but to start the ball game, uh, it's in excellent condition. Well, last week, the University of North Dakota was defeated for the first time in this 84 season, and they dropped from the fourth spot in the polls down to number nine. Now, one concern of Pat Burns is that his team did not play very well on special teams. Last week against Omaha, they had a punt blocked, and that led to a score for Omaha. They had touchdown passes thrown against them. The receivers were covered, but it was a situation where Randy Naran, who's leading the conference in passing, just had a hot night. He completed 17 in a row against North Dakota, and they came away 28-3 to losers. But the Sioux have had an excellent week of practice, according to their coaches. They are ready for this football game. This is the oldest series in Division II football. North Dakota has won uh, their last eight games at home. Now, if that's a momentum factor or not, I don't know. Maybe you can throw all the records out the window when these two teams meet. And this is the last shot for the Sioux seniors against NDSU. Uh, the, the Bison have won the last three ball games. The Sioux last one in 1980 in the game played here. And uh, one thing I want to make sure we get straightened out before the game gets started, this series uh, got underway back in 1894. I was not a spectator at that game. <laughs> There you see the captains for both football teams going out on the field. Let's go down to Dana Mock, and he'll have the flip of the coin and our pictures there as well. Five minutes low. To each other, please. Men, the other officials today, Jim Murray is the head linesman, Dick Erickson, umpire, Jay Selman, line judge, Tom Peralt, back judge. White, who's going to call a coin for you? This is a head, that's a tail. I'll throw it up and try to catch it. If it hits the ground, they'll call it as it lays, okay? Yes. Call the head. Came up heads. White, you've won the toss. You may kick, receive, defend the goal, or defer the choice until the start of the second half. We'll defend that goal. Defend that goal. Green team, you can kick or receive. Or receive. You'll take the ball. All right, let's turn this way then. Excuse me. White team won the top. They're defending this goal. Well, there you heard it, Rods. The North Dakota State Bison won the toss. Normally, Don Morton will defer to the second half, but he decided to take the win. The wind is momentum. We'll be back with the kickoff right after this. Gate City Federal's checking account outweighs all other checking in town. Gate City pays five and a quarter percent annual interest compounded daily. And we'll give you two cents for every unused check blank from your current account when you start checking at one of our 18 convenient locations. Gate City's account is service charge free with a $100 minimum balance. The best point of all. Get the checking account that tops the scales at Gate City Federal where you're saving for a better way of life. In all the world, there are but a few automobiles that can be considered works of art. Valley Imports invites you to inspect four Audi cars of distinction. Volkswagen built with technical excellence. Porsche, a passion for performance. Mercedes-Benz, and the highest regard for safety. Automobiles engineered like no other cars in the world. At the Valley's home of fine automobiles, Valley Imports Fargo. Back in Grand Forks, the Bison won the toss and elected to take the win to start this football game. There is over a 20-mile-an-hour wind at the back of the Bison. Normally, I was telling guys that the Bison normally go for uh, 
they opt to the second half so they can determine whether they take the win or the ball, whatever, if they're behind or ahead. But now, that, as we suspect that uh, somebody wants it, they want that win with them uh, for, you know, to get that early jump. Uh, that was almost an automatic, the way whoever did win the coin flip was going to go this way. Now, Pat Burns has got to be happy about this. His football team is going to get the ball right off the bat. And after scoring only three points last week, I know they've made some adjustments this week in practice. They're anxious to get the football and make things happen. Ken Kubish is ready to kick it away as Tracy Martin and Willis Jaycox are deep for the University of North Dakota. And the 89th meeting is away in Grand Forks as the kick goes out of the end zone. And the University of North Dakota, let's see where they're going to do. Did it go out at the one-yard line or did it go out of the end zone? That's if it's good. out of the end zone, it's going to be on the 20-yard line. And if it went out, they'll have to re-kick. They're pointing back upfield. It looks like they're going to re-kick and there'll be a, a five-yard penalty. It must have gone out of bounds uh, just down in that corner. Raj, we're going to see here today some excellent running backs. No, you, they're going to give them the ball right there on the 30. That, that's a new rule in college okay, football right. yep. that if it goes totally out of the end zone, it will come out to the 30-yard line. So the Bison will be tested early on defense as the University of North Dakota will take the football and Tony Dorso is starting at quarterback for the University of North Dakota. A slightly separated shoulder. He has been inactive in practice for the past couple of weeks. Did not play last week against Omaha. He's 6'3", 210, and a junior. An excellent option quarterback. The handoff goes right up the middle, and that is Tony Mizzou. Mizzou takes it from the 30 to the 35-yard line. And uh, there you see Ramsey is not starting at quarterback. It is Tony Dorso. That is a late decision by head coach Pat Burns. Well, you got to go with your best right away. Tracy Martin, Tom Nelson and the flanker is Mark Veldman. He's a great one. A long line of football players out of that family, and the split end is Smith. So here we go on second down, and let's give uh, Mizzou a good five yards on that one. It'll be second down and five from the 35-yard line of the University of North Dakota out of an eye formation. Long count by Dorso. Once again, this is Mizzou. And on the stop that time was Flint Fleming, the defensive tackle for North Dakota State. They're testing the middle early. The offensive line for the University of North Dakota, and we've just got two big offensive lines. This right. group averages over 250. <laughs> and, of course, the Bison are right in that territory, too. Glenn Kuchera, the tight end and uh, one of the captains for the Sioux, is an excellent football player. Breitling out of West Fargo, a very dominant center, and that's going to be a tough one for today for Paul Nielsen, the nose guard for North Dakota State. And Bosch is replacing Keller at a guard spot. Keller is slightly injured. Bosch from Mandan, Keller a, a Bismarck product. First pass of the ball game. Nope, Dorso's going to turn it up, and I believe Not he enough. is short of the first down. Now, he was a little tentative that time. He's uh, trying to protect that shoulder a little bit, but that is that is his bread and butter, Rods, the rollout, and he does this very well. Right, there you see him rolling to the left. Mun Munson coming up. Munson coming up there uh, from his linebacking spot. Now they uh, dump him right there on the corner, and uh, they don't get enough for the first down, and we'll see what they can do kicking into the wind. Well, that is going to be the first big test of the ball game. As you see, uh, Kutra going in punt formation for the University of North Dakota, standing at his own 25-yard line. And he gets a kick away into the win, a fair catch by Toshner at the 42-yard line. And uh, there might have been a loose football there, but the officials say it belongs to the Bison. So right off the bat, we'll take a look at the Bison offense. Jeff Bentram leading the nation in scoring and rushing. The Bison are averaging 24 points a game uh, or the Sioux are averaging 24 points a game in the North Central Conference, and the Bison are averaging 43 points a game, and that leads the nation. Bentram at quarterback, Molstry, close, Stark, Bosch, and Robinson are the wideouts. First and 10 for the Herd at their own 42. Bentram wants to roll out, and he is sacked way back at the 35-yard line, and maybe even more than that. In on the stop that time for the University of North Dakota was Randy Harless, number 92, and he just muscles his way right in there. There they go. Uh, a lot of green jerseys coming in on them, but uh, again, it's that big Hollis, the nose guard, that uh, caused most of the damage coming right up uh, the middle. The offensive line for North Dakota State, Osley, Carmody, Reamer, Hagfors, Hall, and Daginski. Now, the matchup to watch is Greg Hagfors, as you look at the Sioux sideline quickly, and their, uh, their playbook. Randy Harless at nose guard. 
and Greg Hagfors. Second down and 15 for the Bison. Back at their own 36. Quick option. Pitch to the outside. This is Hank Close. And in on the stop that time. Doug Johnson came up uh, from his uh, strong safety spot. He must have been blitzing on the play because he got in there in a hurry. Well, Dave Olson likes to bring his secondary up quickly and get him involved in the uh, defending the option. He took on the blocker and then uh, just had enough. Uh, Ted Hall was doing the blocking on the play, but Johnson was able to fight off the blocker and get a piece of the ball carry. Well, the Bison off to a first two play slow start here. Come up and split backs on third down and about 20. Way back to their own 32 yard line. Robinson in motion, and now Bentram rolls out, trying to set up, and he's going to be sacked. Back by number 57. Don Ulmer, the I'll defensive end. 6'2", 215 pound senior. That Sioux defense is fired up. You bet. Dave Olson has this defense ready, and it's so important, Raj, uh, that your defense comes out and has a first big series, and right away we have seen three plays for loss of yardage for North Dakota State. And uh, they're going to have to regroup on the other sideline as you see the Sioux defensive line, Holmquist, Topic, Harless, Scadlin, and Ulmer. So uh, they physically did the job in that first series. Osley, Three men back deep for the Sioux on this one. Osley in punt formation. Gets a nice kick away with the win. Taken back at the 20-yard line and then fumbled momentarily to the outside. And Strout makes the tackle on the return that time. It was Ken Van Overbeck. And we'll be back. Grand Forks right after this. Get the action pack advantage. Your style says action. Innovative, exciting, yet practical. The action pack checking account of Metropolitan Federal works to your advantage. Action pack gives you interest on your checking account without having to maintain a minimum balance. And you'll find the special rates on homeowner and auto insurances a real bonus. There's more, like discounts when you travel or shop. A smart value at $5 a month. Check out Action Pack at Metropolitan Federal. It's to your advantage. This is a showroom like any other car dealer's showroom. This is a car lot with acres of new cars like any other car dealer's. But this car dealer is different. This is Selland Pontiac GMC. They have just one factory sticker price, not two or three. Your cost is as low as possible. Their professional sales staff is the most experienced in the area. They know their product and their service you can trust. All at Selland Pontiac GMC, home of total customer satisfaction, South Moorhead. No score in the first quarter. No score in the first quarter between the Bison and Sue. Let's go down to the Bison sideline with Dana Mock. And Earl Solomon said uh, it's going to be a knock down drag out affair. The defensive line is going to have to just play a little hard zone. He said they've got to control the line of scrimmage, especially when the Sioux are against the win. That's right now. Back to you, Ed. Okay. We'll have reports from both the Bison and the Sioux sideline as the afternoon goes on. Now the Sioux take over first and 10 at their own 19 yard line. And they come up in a two tight end formation and eye backs. Dorso started the football game. A quarterback fumbles the snap, a loose football, and there's a big pile. I don't know who's got it, but it sure drew a crowd. I think Dorso got back on it. Yes, he did. Quickly in there for the Bison was uh, number 53, Scott Gunzel. He is a freshman linebacker for North Dakota State, and he was a walk-on from Marble, Minnesota. You don't hear that too often. Here's the replay. All right, there's the uh, fumble snap, but Dorso gets right back on top of it, and they, they might even gain about a half a yard. Out of an eye formation on second down from the 19-yard line. The Sioux, they go fumble the football again, a loose ball, and uh, the Bison, Bison say they like have they it. Got it. Let's see what the official says. The handoff from no. Dorso to Mizzou resulted in a loose football again and uh, two plays in a row. The Sioux of uh, trying to cough it up here, but they recover their own fumble. Here it is again. There's the handoff, and he's having trouble getting the handle as he came through the line of scrimmage, but uh, again, the, uh, they stopped the play, but the Sioux were able to keep the football, but they've got a lot of real estate in front of them with the wind in their face. Well, we have not seen an offensive show here this afternoon by both offenses by any stretch of the imagination. I formation again. Dorso tosses. This is Jay Cox trying to get to the outside, maybe a couple of yards. It'll be third down and long for the Sioux as they're going to have to punt it away into another strong wind here. And Kuchera is going to be standing back at his own 10-yard line. Paul Nielsen came over from his uh, nose guard spot to, to make the original hit on that one. 
and it'll bring a kicking situation for the Sioux. Again, the Bison should have good field position, although the last time they had it didn't do much good. Well, you know what was interesting? The last time they got the football, they tried to go to the outside with three plays, and they are a great dive team. Let's see if they change that this time around. Kucherin, punt formation, gets the kick away. It's a low kick, and that's the best way to kick it against a strong wind. And look at that. The Sioux get a nice, nice bounce into Bison territory down to the 40-yard line. Now, that kid is well coached. Anytime you've got a strong wind, the last thing you want to do is stick one way up there and have it go behind you. And with this wind today, that could have very well have happened. But Kutra smartly put it directly into the wind, and the Sioux get a good punt against a strong wind. Ball just inside the 40 at about the 39, 39 and a half where the Bison will take over. Sioux run a 5-2 defense. Randy Harless, the highly touted nose tackle for the University of North Dakota. Backers are playing a little bit deep. Bison run the dive inside. This is Chad Stark in a big hole up the middle. Brings it across the 50-yard line to the 46-yard line of North Dakota. So the first series we saw him go perimeter. This time they go straight ahead. Here's Stark on a quick dive, and look at that hole. Nothing but running room. Tommy Hedberg, the linebacker, 52 for uh, the Sioux, was really flying out of there, and he turned back, and Stark was right past him. That flow will really get linebackers moving. 16-yard pickup on the play. Bentram on the option. Has some running room. Turns it up. Five, ten yards, a first down, and pulled out of bounds at the Sioux 34-yard line. The Sioux uh, will play the option differently quite often. That's the Sioux second to first down of the ball game, and of course both of them come in this drive. In fact, in two plays. Once again, the Sioux secondary getting involved in the tackle that time. 44, Doug Johnson, also Steve Johnson, was over there to make the stop. The Bison are with a tight slot this time as you look at Bentram under center, split backs behind him. Molstry and close are the setbacks. Molstry out of Dickinson. Bentram turns it up again on the option and takes it inside the 29-yard line as they pick up five yards on that one. Left side linebacker Tom Hedberg made the stop, but not before a good pickup by Bentram again. Taking a look at the defensive lineup for the North Dakota Sioux, Harless anchor is a very consistent defensive line. This defense leads the conference in total scoring. And the teams that have won the conference over the past 10 years in this league have dominated that statistic. Ventrum on second down and five. Handoff, Molstry, and he gets to the 26-yard line. He'll be short of the first down. Molstry out of Dickinson. The rest of the defense for the University of North Dakota, the linebackers are Hedberg and Greenlees. Two excellent backers in the secondary, Dempsey, Johnson, Johnson, and Plain. Now, the Sioux have been able to get some people flying around the football. They feel like they've gotten better movement on defense than they did a year ago. And they'll need it now with third down and a little more than a yard. Bentram looking for yards, and no. he fumbles the football. The Sioux that have it, I think. Let's see. Yes. The Sioux do have it. And coming up with it is number 96, Lee Topic, 6'3", 240, a junior. And that is, believe it or not, Higgs, that is the first fumble this year that North Dakota State has lost. He figured it had to come sometime. It's only the eighth ball game of the year. And uh, the weather conditions here certainly uh, are conducive to the ball being uh, flipping around quite a bit today. We were mentioning that the Sioux have really been able to get good pursuit this year. And there you saw three green jerseys around the loose football. So now the Sioux take over first and 10 at the 27-yard line. Dorso, the quarterback, out of an eye formation. On the option this time, Dorso no wants to, to turn it up. Shut, the outside linebacker for North Dakota State made the initial contact as Kubish also comes up and makes things happen. And that's what you call gang tackling. You're going to get a good look at some gang tackling right here. There's your initial hit, and then a whole host of Bison finish the play off. Flint Fleming, 87, and uh, Paul Nielsen, 94, was also there to make the stop right in front of our camera. No score in this football game. 5.50 remaining first quarter live from Grand Forks. The Bison and Sioux. Second down and nine now for University of North Dakota. And this is Mizzou up the middle. He's got room. A first down and more to the 40-yard line of North Dakota State. 
best running play of the afternoon for the University of North Dakota, and that's one thing they were missing last week against Omaha as we look at it again. The quick hitter right up the middle. Mizzou is 6-1 and 2-10. And once you get your secondary involved in making the stop, it could be a long afternoon. Jeff Willer is in there at strong safety for the Bison, and the free safety is Todd DeBates. They've been involved in a lot of tackles this year. That is the Sioux's first, uh, first down. Ball's at the 40-yard line. Mizzou with a nice carry up the middle. They're in a pro set, eye formation this time. Bison are staying with a 5-2 defense. Inside again goes Mizzou across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Five minutes remaining, first quarter, no score in Grand Forks between the Bison and Sioux. That was the same play that they uh, broke Mizzou on for that 14-yard uh, pickup. Uh, this time, he was uh, closed down after picking up about two and a half, three yards. You look at the Sioux sideline and the Sioux fans bundled up to the max here in Grand Forks today. Second down now for North Dakota. They've got the ball at the 43-yard line, their own 43, out of an eye formation on second down and seven. Toss comes left side. Jaycox has the room, slips and falls at the 49. On uh, good turf, he might have been good. All right, they're going to bring him back about three or four yards, ruling his knee touched there, but it was still, uh, he'll be shy of the first down. Where they finally stopped him, uh, he had the first down, but they've ruled his knee touched. As you say it, yep. They're bringing that back, and uh, had he not slipped, uh, he had uh, a lot of running room. He's got the great ability to cut back against the grain, and he is a scat back, and... They run a true eye formation, the Sioux do. They've got their tailback seven yards deep in the backfield. You can't even see him on the screen right now. He's so far back. Dorso on the option turns it up on third down, and I think he's going to be short of the first down. Stacking that one up, uh, Lee Munson, uh, the linebacker, was right in there. Dorso kind of stumbling along the line of scrimmage as he tried to cut in, and there's uh, Munson finishing him off, and uh, they're shy of the first down. And even with this wind, I don't think they'll gamble here. No, they're, they're going to go into kick. Uh, they'll be punting for the third time in the ball game. Kuchera is in punt formation for the University of North Dakota on fourth down and a yard from their own 48. They'll punt it away. And another low kick, and I'm not so sure somebody didn't get a hand on that. That'll be down at the 31-yard line. No score from Grand Forks, and we'll be back. All truck companies talk tough, but only one puts its money where its mouth is. Dodge. Because only Dodge gives you a five-year, 50,000-mile warranty on engine, powertrain, and outer body rush-through. It covers new 85 full-size pickups, wagons, vans, and ram chargers, making Dodge the best back trucks in America. That's guaranteed. Stop and Go proudly presents Fresh Giovanni's Pizza. The pizza made with only the choicest ingredients. Thick tomato sauce, 100% real mozzarella, cheddar, and provolone cheese, and a number of tasty toppings seasoned to perfection. Wholesomely fresh, not frozen. Simply place in the oven, and in 10 minutes, you'll be entertaining guests, having a snack after the game, or just treating the family to the freshest, best-tasting pizza around. Giovanni's. It's so easy, so delicious, and now conveniently sold at all Stop and Go stores. Ed, uh, this is a big defensive stand coming up right now for the Sioux because there's only three minutes and three seconds left in the first quarter and that wind advantage. If they, if they can keep the Bison out of the end zone uh, with, them, with that wind at their back, uh, they've done a marvelous job in this first quarter. The Bison are going to have to punt with the wind. Bentram fumbles the snap and he gets his own uh, fumble. Back at the 32-yard line, 31-yard line, and that'll be second down and 11 now. The football is tough to hang on to. We've seen uh, the Bison fumble once earlier today, and also the Sioux have had a couple of fumbles, but they've recovered their own mistake. So on second down and 11, the Bison will try to get back to the fundamentals of just hanging on to the football. It is a tough situation out there today because of the elements. Bison operating with a win at their back. No score in the football game. Bentram, handoff inside. Uh -oh. This is Hank Close to the midfield. Hank Close, the senior running back. He is averaging 
over five yards a carry. In fact, three buys and running backs come into this game today averaging over seven yards a carry. There it is, and boy, he had a gaping hole, and the secondary has to come up as Hank crosses midfield. Now nope, they're going to put him just a little shy of midfield at about the 49 and a half yard line. But first, that is a Bison first down, their third of the ball game. The dive play has been working for the Bison so far at the line of scrimmage. That once again is Hank close to ball carrier, and we have not seen too much of Chad Stark. I wonder if he's not injured. He's coming in the ball game now, along with Terry Meske as Close and Bosch go out, out of the game, and so the Bison now on second down and 10 will go to two tight ends. The Sioux have done an excellent job defensively so far in this football game. A lot of people thought this was going to be a high-scoring game. There's only a minute 30 remaining in the first quarter. We're scoreless. Ventrum back to pass, has time looking down the middle, and that is almost oh. intercepted by Johnson, the cornerback, number 22, Steve Johnson, 5'11", 200. They're going for Osley down the middle, the tight end. Ball, uh, did hit Osley in the hands. Uh, here's the replay on it. You're going to see... Osley will get a hand on it, and that deflects it away just enough so that Johnson can't get the interception, but he just did miss it. Or that is Meske, the other tight end for North Dakota State. Also down the middle of the field was Osley. I wonder if that wasn't a broken pattern. They had two uh, tight ends right in the center there. It is third down for the Bison at their own 49. In motion goes Hank Close. Single setback now for the Bison. Ventrum on a quarterback draw, up the middle. And he'll get about five, but that's going to be short of the first down. So with a minute 20 remaining in the first quarter and the clock is running, the Bison will punt with the win. And this is a big punt. All right, here it is. Ventrum goes back. And then on the quarterback draw in Hedberg, you see him here, 52, the linebacker, will come in and put the stop on uh, Ventrum shy of the first down. So the, the, Sioux, uh, the Bison will be punting for the second time in the ball game. Phil Osley out of Moorhead was a quarterback in high school for Dan Kostich is standing at his own 40-yard line. Gathers a high snap, and he quickly gets it away, and it is a nice punt. Fair catch called for it. Goes into the end zone, and the Sioux will take over at their own 20-yard line with 42 seconds remaining in the first quarter. No score from Grand Forks, the Bison and Sioux. And uh, coming into this football game today, as I mentioned, three Bison running backs were over seven yards a carry. That was Bentram, Bolstry, and Stark. And Close wasn't far behind. Bentram averaging 50, or hitting 55% of his passes. Dorso hitting 46% of his passes. But I think we've seen early on here, Roger, the first quarter, uh, they may come out of here today hitting 20% because of the elements. Dorso, the quarterback for North Dakota, runs a quarterback sneak brings it across the 20-yard line to the 23-yard line. Dorso was a question mark all week long because of that sore, slight separated shoulder. Well, he's not babying it. Uh, he's carried the ball three or four times in the, already in this ball game. Also in the first quarter, St. Cloud Picked up about uh, four yards on the play. Bring up about a second six uh, for the Sioux. 13 seconds left in the first quarter. They're going to have to hurry to get the playoff. That will probably be the last play. No, we got one more play they of the first quarter. They get it across the 25-yard line once again on a quarterback sneak. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. No score from Grand Forks between the Bison and Sioux. And we'll be back. Chuck Hendrickson knows as much about growing corn in northern growing conditions as just about anyone. I put in a test plot on my farm each year of 20 or 25 different varieties because I'm always looking for the best corn. At Sigco Research, we know the thing northern growers want most is results. Last year on my farm, Sigco yielded as good as anyone, but their dry down was faster. So at our research facilities, we're breeding and testing hundreds of northern corn hybrids for early maturity, high yields, fast dry down, and good standability. I like the fact that Cinco does their testing up here, not a thousand miles away like some companies. So Cinco knows what we're up against. Cinco Research, where research breeds results. 
people of all ages are enjoying more physically active lifestyles. It's fun, it's healthy, and it's important. Your present physical condition and your fitness plan are important too. The sports medicine department of the Dakota Medical Center will determine your strength and flexibility, ideal body weight, offer exercise and nutritional plans, and do cardiovascular testing. You take time for your sports, take time for your life. Visit the sports medicine department, Dakota Clinic, Fargo. In all the world, there are but a few automobiles that can be considered works of art. Valley Imports invites you to inspect four Audi cars of distinction. Volkswagen built with technical excellence. Porsche, a passion for performance. Mercedes-Benz, and the highest regard for safety. Automobiles engineered like no other cars in the world. At the Valley's home of fine automobiles, Valley Imports Fargo. No score as we start the second quarter. Let's go to Pat Sweeney. And the Sioux are literally drooling here on the sidelines. They've got the wind at their back in the second quarter, offensively and defensively. That's all they've been talking about is now that they're going to have to force the Bison to run the ball, and that's just what they're looking for. Okay, thanks a lot, Pat. Pat Sweeney on the Sioux sideline. We'll hear from Dana Mock on the Bison sideline. And uh, the Sioux on third down fumbled the snap dorso did and then quickly fell on it so now the Sioux are faced with a fourth down and about four from their own 26 yard line as you see Pat Burns on the sideline be interesting to see Rog if they open it up throw a little bit with a win Kutra is in punt formation standing inside his own 15 yard line gathers the snap pressures uh -oh. on him and yeah, we're gonna get a flag yes yeah, we we're are. gonna get a flag roughing the kicker beautiful the kick Ball down goes down the to 24 the and down by the Sioux, but there was a flag. Uh, they did run into the kicker, so that'll give the uh, Sioux a first down, and they'll keep, uh, keep the football with the wind at their back unofficially, Ed. I've got the Sioux for 36 yards rushing in the first quarter. Uh, the Bison was 61. We've only had one pass thrown in the game. That was by the Bison, incomplete. We've had five fumbles. One of those lost, and there was the uh, Bison that lost the fumble. And we've already had five punts in the ball game, uh, discounting this one right here. And now, of course, the Sioux won't have to kick. The penalty will give them the first down. Well, you're mentioning yards rushing, uh, Raj. The Bison come in here leading the NCC in two offensive categories, 361 yards per game. But I think that's going to be uh, sharply knocked off today because of the weather, and it's tough to get to the outside. Let's go to the Bison sideline and Dana Mock. And we got an injury update for you, number 69, the offensive lineman from the Bison, Mike Carmody, broke a bone below his index finger. It's the metacarpal below the index finger, but they're taping it up. He'll be back. Up to you. Okay, so we've got our first injury of the ball game, as you see Tony Mazzu, the fullback for the University of North Dakota, pounding the football up to the 45-yard line. Take a look at it again. Here's Mizzou. He's running real well so far today. Uh, like we said in the pregame, he did very little. But uh, there's a pick up there of about uh, 15 yards on the play and another Sioux first down. What he does is, and, and uh, Mizzou in the backfield right now is limping a little bit, getting down into his three-point stance. I think he was uh, re-injured on that one. There you see he's barely moving, and now they go to the Jaycox to the outside. Jaycox on his feet, 40, 35, and out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Willis Jaycox, excellent speed to the outside as you see him getting up pretty fired up there. Here's the toss to the outside. Now watch Mizzou, the fullback, goes right to his knees, but he does make a nice block there for Jaycox, but he was limping before the play. Jay Cox with good balance there to the outside. Although he's had a, had a trouble hanging on to the football this year a little bit. He's fumbled uh, seven times coming into this game. Ball's inside the 30 at the 29 yard line. Best drive of the day for the Sioux. Mizzou, the fullback inside, pounds his way for a good four yards just shy of the 25 yard line. Let's take a look at that uh, Bison defense as Dana Muehlhauser, Paul Nielsen, and Flint Fleming are the up front people, and you'll also see uh, Jeff Bowden in there who has moved over from the offensive to the defensive line. The backers are Shutt, Munson, Genzel, and John Dunbar, the senior who uh, has had a good season. Braxton, Service, Willer, and DeBates are in there in the secondary. 
I formation now. Dorso the quarterback on second down and six. This is Jaycox, left tackle, and a good piece First of running. Down. Jaycox pounds his way inside the 20 yard line and for one of the smallest guys on the field. He sure got big yardage on that one, more than six yards, as that's a Sioux first down at the 19 of the Bison. Well, this is a great opportunity for the University of North Dakota because they've got the wind at their back. Even if they are held by the Bison, they will be in good field goal position here to break this scoreless tie in Grand Forks. Sioux operating with two wide receivers at the top of your screen. This is Mizzou inside. Nowhere. Maybe a yard that time as shut the outside linebacker closes it down for the Bison. Also, Nielsen, the nose guard, gets up underneath the pile. A lot of people expected a big offensive showing here today, but Don Morton said all week long that the elements will be a neutralizer, and that's exactly what we've seen here this afternoon in Grand Forks. Now, Dorso, faced with a second down and nine from the Bison 18-yard line, brings him up out of an eye formation. Jay Cox and Mizzou are the setbacks. This is Jay Cox to the 15, still on his feet to the 11-yard line. Short of the first down is Munson, the linebackers over there in on the stop of the Bison. Also, Bowden, Jeff Bowden, number 50, the defensive tackle. Here it is again. His Jay Cox cuts back inside, then tries to get outside. This is Munson and a whole host of tacklers. Uh, I think Gunsel was in on that one also. But uh, another good pickup by Jay Cox. They're uh, about a yard and a half away from another first down, uh, just outside the 10-yard line. As you look at a very concerned Don Morton right now, South Dakota's leading South Dakota State 7 to nothing with five minutes left in the first quarter. St. Cloud leads Mankato 3 to nothing in the first. Sneak Dorso, I think he has the first down. Dorso he should have enough. inside the 10-yard line. And that will be uh, a Sioux first down inside the 10-yard line and down to the 8-yard line for the University of North Dakota. It'll be first and goal. UND, 7-1 and on the season. Only one loss. That was last week to Omaha. They reeled off seven straight wins. Ranked high in the polls all season long. After that loss, they went to number nine. They certainly look like a nationally ranked football team here today. Toss right side. This is Jay Cox to the six-yard line as Muehlhauser is in on the stop, and the Bison say they've got it. Let's see what the call is. Flint Fleming comes out of the huddle with the football, and the officials have yet to tell us who's got it, and now they're saying the Bison have got it. Well, that is the biggest break of the ball game for North Dakota State. Let's take a look at it. Jay Cox goes right side. Here he comes, and he's hit right there by three or four tacklers. The ball, uh, we can't get a good view of it. It did pop loose, and it was Fleming, number 87, uh, for the Bison, who came up with the football. All right, here's another look at it. Okay, they hit by Munson. There's the ball coming out, and it uh, was recovered by the Bison. Bentram turns it up on the option, and not much there. The Bison uh, got to be happy with that kind of a break. Sue very frustrated. They were certainly within striking distance, if not with a touchdown, at least a field goal, to break this scoreless tie. Ten minutes remaining, first half. We're live from Grand Forks. Ed Schultz along with Rod Higgins, Pat Sweeney, and Dana Mock on the North Dakota Sports Network. Ventrum brings them up now on second down and nine. They brought it across the five to the six and a half yard line. Ventrum, option again, across the 10 and pulled down at the 14 yard line. Pulled down that time, uh, in on the stop for the University of North Paul Dakota. Paul Holmquist, the defensive end, I think got him by the jersey. Uh, Ventrum had some running room other than that, but uh, just reached out Holmquist and pulled him down. Ventrum normally breaks tackles like that. Holmquist must be a pretty strong football player. He's 6'3", 225, and a junior. Plays that left side awfully well. Split backs now. Two tight ends in for the Bison on third down and two. 14-yard line is where the Bison have it. 
inside handoff. Chance Stark to the 15, and that's it. I believe he's short of the first down. Randy Hollis made the hit, the middle, uh, the, the, the nose guard. He uh, just went along the line of scrimmage. Watch, he makes a big move here. There he is, reaching out, pulling him down. 280-pound senior. 64, Greg Hagfors is the center, and 92 is Harless, the nose guard. Keep your eye on that matchup all day long. Those two players are regarded as two of the best linemen in the conference. There's a timeout on the field. North Dakota State takes their first timeout on the afternoon. No score from Grand Forks, and we'll be back. W.W. W. Wallwork is North Dakota's largest Ford dealer, and because we sell more Fords than anyone else, we can sell them for less. That's why we're offering the luxurious 1985 Ford LTD for only $99.99. And look at these options. Air conditioning, rear window defroster, AM FM stereo, cruise control, and automatic transmission, just to name a few. LTD, the full-size luxury sedan you've been waiting for. Only $99.99 and only at Wallworks. Moorhead Linoleum, the store where quality comes first, is now offering you quality with savings. Now through November 15th, Moorhead Linoleum is offering you top quality Armstrong flooring at a discount of 10%. Armstrong flooring features inlaid color, the process that makes the color richer and deeper looking. Inlaid color makes your flooring more durable and resistant to cuts, tears, and gouges. That's Armstrong quality now at a 10% discount at Moorhead Linoleum and Tile in Moorhead. And the University of North Dakota has called timeout now for one big reason. The Bison sent their punting team out on the field on fourth and a yard from their own 15-yard line, and then Don Morton sent his offensive team back in the ball game. Now, that's what the Bison would be punting against, and Don Morton said we might as well go for it. Boy, I'll tell you what, that would be a gutsy call with 8.30 remaining in the first half. Morton's going to go for it from his own 15-yard line. Well, they changed uh, special teams, and then the Sioux called timeout. Dave Olson talking to his uh, defensive captain, Tom Hedberg, number 52. He's 6'2", 220. Sends him back in the huddle, so maybe uh, Olson will sell the farm and send everybody. The rain is coming down, and it is coming down in very strong. Now, <laughs> because the, the, that wind has picked up again, and it's just driving right in the bison's face, so... This is a big gamble, but uh, he probably wouldn't punt it past the 30-yard line. Number so. 54 in there on the offensive line for North Dakota State is Eric Brust. He's in there for Carmody, who broke his finger. On fourth down, look at this. The Bison are going for it. Handoff, right side, Stark. And I don't know if he's got it. I think it, we'll have to wait for the forward progress, but I think he got enough of it on the dive. Let's see if not that he's going to measure. Here it is, Raj. Yep, he just dove over and got enough of it. Well, needless to say, that was a gutsy call. With 8.23 remaining, clock is running in the first half. No score from Grand Forks. You go for it on your own 15-yard line and get it. Now, that's what those guys get paid the big bucks for. <laughs> Split backs now behind Bentram. Runs the option. Pitch back. This is Hank Close. He falls down at the 11-yard line as they lose five yards on that play. It'll be second down and 15. And he was covered immediately by John Omer. You'll see Close slip as he gets the pitch back from Bentram. His feet just go out from under him, and he's covered immediately by Omer. So a loss on the play. Well, what the Sioux are doing defensively is that when they see the option, and they see a play that may end up on the perimeter, they are really selling out and bringing their defensive backs up to make the play. Now that's ideal for a pass, but throwing against this wind is not the greatest thing in the world. It's a chess game right now. No score, second down and 15 from the Bison 11-yard line. This is Molstree to the outside, still on his feet. Turns on the Jets, has a first down across the 25 to the 28-yard line. Well, we said earlier today, Raj, that uh, both teams have got excellent running backs. There he is, Molstreet. And even uh, on this muddy turf, he'll show you some of his speed once he gets some running room. He's going to turn the corner out here. And uh, then it's a foot race towards the sideline. He, uh, he actually wasn't tackled. His feet slipped out from under him as he tried to cut away from that sideline. But he got the bison out of a deep hole. They've got a little operating room right now with a first down. 
the way both offensive lines have blocked today for the Sioux and the Bison, uh, I think we would see a, a great deal more yards than what we've seen so far because we've seen backs break the line of scrimmage and then fall down. 7.02 remaining first half, no score, and we'll be back. It doesn't matter whether you're going fishing, hunting, camping, or just sightseeing. The way to go is in a Coachman Motorhome. And the place to go for Coachman Motorhomes is Bernie's Camper Corral, West Fargo, and Grand Forks. From minis to luxurious Class A motorhomes, Bernie's Camper Corral can help you out. Plus, they've got the service and accessories you need to make traveling even more enjoyable. Go in style. Go Coachman from Bernie's Camper Corral, Gateway Drive, Grand Forks, and across from the fairgrounds, West Fargo. You think this is fun? How'd you like to be sitting here for a hundred years? I'd rather be spending my days on the beach in Florida, but I didn't ask. You know, they ask me, agents from New York Life, if you want a great retirement plan or life insurance to fit your budget, all you've got to do is ask. I sure wish I had. See a New York Life agent like Steve Hartman, Richard Lang, Richard Niemeyer. Mankato State leads St. Cloud State 7-6 to six, uh, late in the second quarter. University of South Dakota now out in front of South Dakota State 13-7 to seven, with 12 minutes left in the first half. And here in Grand Forks, we are scoreless between the Bison and Sioux. Bison have the football on first down at their own 27-yard line with seven minutes remaining in the first half. Handoff right side. This is Molstry again. And that's going to be another Bison first down. Molstry out of Dickinson, North Dakota. I understand he's got a brother that's not too bad either. Right, he plays for that Dickinson High School team that will be in the playoffs next week. Uh, he may be a half step slower, but uh, half step slower than James Molstry is moving. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and we'll televise that state championship football game on the station that you're watching right now. Should be a great one. Class A football in North Dakota. Bentram now has his troops at the 38-yard line. First down, Bison territory. Split backs. Bench from on the option into the secondary. First down and more to the outside. Fumble the football out of bounds. It'll be up close to midfield as the Bison now on three plays have reeled off more than 30 yards. Here it is again. Bentram rolling along the line on the option. Decides to keep it. Has the opening there. Cuts in. Evades one man. Now heading towards the sideline. Uh, coming over Steve Johnson, number 22, will put the last hit on him. Force him out of bounds. He fumbled the ball, but... Uh, it was out of bounds in the Bison uh, retained possession. If our end zone camera, folks, looks a little blurry, it's only because it's got about 40 gallons of water coming in <laughs> front of it. <laughs> First down now inside Sioux territory at the 48-yard line. Brian's earning his pay today. He certainly is. Carry across the 45-yard line that time, and the jerseys are getting muddy. I don't know who that was. Well, I believe it was Hank Close, 35, as he goes out of the ball game and Chad Stark comes in. Second down now, and let's make it a long six for the Bison as they're inside the 45 down to the 43-yard line of North Dakota. This game's been relatively uh, penalty-free. We've only had the one penalty, that roughing the kicker. Other than that, uh, nothing. That's right. Second down now for the Herd, and six. Ventrum, long count. Inside handoff. This is Stark. Stark has the first down, still on his feet. Second effort, Chad Stark out of Brookings, South Dakota. The Bison recruited him right out of the backfield or right out of the backyard of the Jackrabbits, and this is why they did that. He's got the good opening, shakes a tackle there. Now some running room. Now watch this second effort. He's going to get some extra yards. Look at that. He got about five to seven extra yards with second effort. Johnson and Plain just could not lock up on him. So Stark, for the Bison, carries it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. This is the best drive of the afternoon for North Dakota State. Ventrum, long count. They will audible a lot at the line of scrimmage. Ventrum turns it up, and he's met right away after about a yard gain. Lee Topic in on the stop that time. He's 6'3", 240, and a junior. He wears 96. Is Ventrum, but he's not going to have much running room this time as he cuts it up. Topic will come over and put them away. The, the Bison have picked up six first downs against the wind in this uh, second quarter. So they've been moving the football because the big gamble, uh, they've come a long way since that first down. <laughs> the back at the 15-yard line on fourth down, their own 15, they went for it. 
but they have changed their game a little bit, uh, Raj. They're really just going straight ahead. They're, we haven't seen a pitch back since Hank Close lost some yardage back at his own 10-yard line. And Bentram, on his feet, did not pitch that one back. Well, Hedberg uh, really played that one well. Coming in from his linebacker spot, uh, he went right for Bentram, and Bentram uh, figured he didn't want to take the gamble of pitching it back. He tried to cut it up, but Hedberg put him away. Now, there you see it. Uh, Hank closes the pitch back 35, and they've got a man on him. They're taking that away. They want Ventrum to carry the football, apparently. Dave Olson, uh, the defensive coordinator for the University of North Dakota, believes in giving an option offense a lot of different looks, and that's what they've done here this afternoon. On third down for the herd now, inside handoff. This is Molstreet as he carries the football inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. That's going to be close to a first down. Be about a yard and a half shy. Well, if they went for a fourth down in their own 15, they're bound to do it here. And there's no way they'll try a field goal. Not in this win. It is really strong in the face of uh, North Dakota State. There's only 340 remaining in the first half. No score from Grand Forks. The Bison and Sioux, 89th meeting. Bison have won the last three meetings between these two teams. Two tight ends in the ballgame now for the Bison. Bentram on the option, turns it up, slips, goes forward. I don't know if he got it. Holmquist, number 90, the uh, outside linebacker is there to meet Bentram, and it'll be close to a first down. Here's another look at it. Uh, they're, they're probably going to have to bring the sticks in on this one. And that rain, incidentally, uh, is now turning to a little snow. There are some flakes beginning to fall. They're going to have to bring in the chains. The Bison pointing, saying they've got it, but... Uh, We'll let the officials decide it for us. That's right. You have to remember, they're in Grand Forks. <laughs> uh, they did get it. They did. Just enough. That is the seventh first down for the Bison in this second period, and unofficially, I have them for 10 in the ball game. Well, 19-yard line is where North Dakota State has it. This has been their most impressive movement on offense today. The Sioux had a really nice drive going, but they coughed it up inside the 10-yard line. Uh, Willis Jaycox, he's had that problem. Uh, he had seven fumbles coming into today's game, and uh, he had his eighth today. Ventram on first down, gives it to Stark. Stark on a dive play, just shy of the 15-yard line. He picked up about four. He was met by a whole host of uh, green and white jerseys, but uh, let's see what they give him for four. Well, they're going to give him about three yards on forward progress. Well, they'll spot it right at the 15-yard line. I bet the majority of people in North Dakota are either watching this game, here at the game, or goose hunting <laughs> with this weather. <laughs> Bentram now, split backs and two tight ends on second down and six. The ball's at the 15-yard line of North Dakota. Again, inside handoff. This is Mole Street to about the 13, and that's about it. Nice defensive play that time by the University of North Dakota. Randy Hollis. Randy Hollis, the nose guard, was the one that uh, plugged that one up. Then he got a, got a lot of help, but Hollis uh, made the initial hit, and there wasn't much room for that running back. You know, Raj, what the Bison do a lot on their offensive line is single block, and that was one of the things they wanted to test today to see if they could cut off that lateral movement of Randy Harless. So far, they have not been able to do that. They're going to have to double-team that guy. Third down and five now. Handoff inside again. Chad Stark still on his feet inside the five to the three-yard line. On third down and five, Stark comes up with a big, big run inside the five, and here it is again. Just like that one he had a few moments ago. He gets hit a few times, but uh, he just keeps bouncing off tacklers, and then when they do get a grip on him, he uh, spins away and uh, picks up uh, two or three additional yards, and he's down... Uh, to the three-yard line where it is first and goal for the Bison. Uh, this is our second scoring threat of uh, this ball game. The Sioux had an excellent opportunity uh, down close. Now it's the Bison turn. We've got a scoreless ball game. Minute 40 left in the half. Ventrum, first and goal. Right side. That's Hank Close over the right tackle that time on a dive play. And uh, the uniforms are starting to really uh, get muddied up here. This is not Lambeau Field in uh, <laughs> Green Bay. This is Grand Forks. Clock's still running. We're down to 116 as the uh, Bison go back to huddle. Very little pickup on that last play, a half yard at the most. 
As you see the end zone shot, Bentram. Bench from the quarterback, and Hagfors, the center, wants a dry ball. That is double duty when you got to block Randy Harless and then you got to snap a wet ball at the same time. Randy Harless out of Lidgerwood. There you see the crowd bundled up here in Grand Forks today. They and were yeah, expecting. With that close shot, there you can see that our rain has turned to snow. Yep. They were expecting 14,000 here today. Bench from now with split backs behind him on second and goal. Just inside the three-yard line. On the option, pitch back, Bull Street to the outside. Touchdown, North Dakota State. With 43 seconds remaining in the first half, we have got our first score in Grand Forks. First score of the ball game goes to North Dakota State. The option, nice block on the outside that time by Chad Stark. And James Molstry out of Dickinson, North Dakota, takes it in for the score. And Kenny Kubish will attempt the extra point. This could be interesting. He really had problems in pregame practice. Everything was blowing way off to the right. Boy, those uprights sure look skinny in weather like this. Brad Straup is the holder. Snap is down. Kick is up. It is good. Got it through. Bison are out in front. Seven to nothing. 43 seconds remaining in the first half. And North Dakota will go back on offense as we take a look at the Bison touchdown, a three-yard three touchdown run by James Molstry. Watch this block by Chad Stark. Top of your screen, nice block on Johnson, Steve Johnson, the cornerback that time. And I'm not so sure uh, we'll be hearing from Dana Mock on the sideline. I believe that Chad Stark was shaken up on that play. He was helped off the field by Dr. Lee Christofferson, and we will get a quick interview with Don Morton and Pat Burns at the end of this first half as the snow is really coming down in Grand Forks now. With 43 seconds remaining in the first half. So Kenny Kubish, now I would kind of expect a squib kick here, Raj with only 43 seconds remaining. Because right, you're not going to kick it very far anyway. Let's go down to Dana Mock on the Bison sideline. Ed John Schoenemann, the trainer for North Dakota State, said Chad Stark just got dinged. They're going to take a minute, evaluate it at half, and see if he can play in the second half. Back to you. OK, that's the story. Of course, if you block as much as those guys do, uh, you're going to get the wind knocked out of you every now and then. 43 seconds remaining in, in the half as the Bison uh, leads 7 to nothing in Grand Forks. And the Sioux missed a golden opportunity down inside the 10-yard line, and Willis Jaycox coughed it up. And they had a nice drive going there that time. It was over 40 yards. And uh, they had the wind at their back in the second quarter. They had some momentum. They had some nice yards up the middle by Tony Mizzou. And uh, Mizzou was limping a little bit here towards the end of the first half. So we'll uh, get you an update on exactly what's happening with Tony Mizzou. The Bison running game uh, has picked up even against the wind in that second quarter. I've got him unofficially for about uh, 95 yards on the ground. Didn't even attempt to pass. Whoop, that's Swoop trouble. kick, oh, and onside it. kick is recovered by North Dakota State. It hit a Sioux player on the foot, and we'll check that on the replay, but that is a great uh, play by Steve Dahl, number 99 of North Dakota State. Makes the recovery. There it is. It hit his foot, a Sioux player. I believe that was number 50, Eric Breitling, out of West Fargo. It hit his foot. I don't think the Bison were trying an onside kick, but this is an opportunity with 43 seconds remaining. They could get something on the board again. Well, they're right at the midfield, although I don't think we're going to see him put the ball in the air. No, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Of course, you never know. Anybody will go for it on fourth of their own 15-yard line. Molstry to the outside. He's got some running room. He's pulled down at the 31-yard line of North Dakota, and the Bison have got two timeouts remaining here in this first half. They've already used one of them. They used one timeout before they went for it at the 15-yard line. Here it is. Molstry again breaks loose, and Ulma, the defensive end, is finally going to catch up with them from behind and bring them down, but uh, not before a big pickup. Uh, by James Molstreet. Clock is running with 25 seconds remaining in the half. First down, Bentram wants to throw it. He's rolling out, being pressured. Throws it long into the end zone. This is Stacy Robinson, and that's going to be picked off by the Sioux. 
Nice defensive play that time by number 44. Doug Johnson, uh, that ball, uh, if we get to see it again, you'll see that it's going to flutter up there. He tried to put everything he had into it. Stacy Robinson was down there, but then the ball hangs up in that wind, and Johnson makes the interception, and the Sioux take over. Well, uh, we missed the call on that one. They did throw against a uh, hurricane here. <laughs> <laughs> and it cost them. Ventrum put everything he had into that one. It was underthrown against a strong wind. Now Dorso and company will take over inside their five-yard line with 15 seconds remaining in the first half. Dorso on a quarterback sneak. Uh, shut the outside linebacker is there to make the stop. And... Uh, That's going to do it, I believe, in this first half. They're going to let it just run down as the snow intensity picks up. Dana Mock is going over to get a couple of words with head coach Don Morton. And uh, let's go. Uh, we'll hold it here just for a second as Dana Mock is gathering uh, Don Morton. And uh, Pat Burns will join us on the sideline with Pat Sweeney. 7 to nothing. North Dakota State leads this football game in Grand Forks, a three-yard touchdown run by James Molstreet. Let's go down to Dana Mock. He is with head coach Don Morton. All right, Don, uh, you had some... Well, it's come next. They were playing good defense in, in the field. We've just got to be patient on running game. Just keep pounding up inside there. It's very tough to go outside with the field, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's, it's just tough to get the acceleration that you need to go outside. All right, what did that touchdown do for you at the end of the half? A little confidence booster for the offense? I think a little momentum, yes. Are you, are you, are you able to handle the line of scrimmage uh, defensively with your young, young line? I think we're, we're playing pretty well. There's still a lot of football game left. It's going to be a heck of a second half. Thanks, Mark. Go get them. Back to you, Ed. Okay, Dana, let's go down to the sideline with Pat Sweeney and Pat Burns. Pat, last week you said your problem was uh, not cashing in on those opportunities. It seems you had the same thing today in the second quarter there. Well, there's no question. We had the ball down in the six-yard line, and you just can't fumble like that, and we're just going to have to come back out and get that touchdown right away. The Sioux were anticipating that second quarter because you had that wind at your back and forcing the Bison to run. You thought you could do it, but so far they've uh, managed to move right down the field. Well, that last drive they had was a great drive. We're just going to have to tie our straps on here and come back and get that touchdown and score some more points. Okay. Good luck to you. Thank you. Pat Burns and Pat Sweeney down on the sideline here in Grand Forks. We are at halftime as you're watching the marching band for the University of North Dakota. The Bison lead the Sioux 7 to nothing. We'll be back with our halftime activity in a moment. There's something about driving a Buick that seems to give you an edge. It says quality, it says taste, and it's important for me to portray that image both when I'm at work and when I'm at play. Oh, I shopped around before I bought a car, but when I found that I could drive a Buick as affordably as a Chevy or Ford, it was an easy decision. There's no doubt about it, your car says a lot about you. And my Buick says all the right things. Wouldn't you really rather have a Buick? Hold it! Can anyone here name a copier maker that's bigger than Rico? Xerox. Rico's bigger. IBM? Rico's bigger. And we got to be bigger than Xerox by making a full line of copiers that win top marks for quality, like this Rico 6080 console copier. What a revelation. Now, are you still overlooking Rico and the Rico 6080? See the Rico copiers at GR Graphics, 3201 Fichtner Drive, Fargo. Gate City Federal's checking account outweighs all other checking in town. Gate City pays five and a quarter percent annual interest compounded daily. And we'll give you two cents for every unused check blank from your current account when you start checking at one of our 18 convenient locations. Gate City's account is service charge free with a $100 minimum balance. The best point of all. Get the checking account that tops the scales at Gate City Federal where you're saving for a better way of life. Do-it-yourselfers, you just can't be. Jiffy Lube Complete. Women on the go, you just can't be. Jiffy Lube Complete. Jiffy Lube is an oil change with a major brand, a new oil filter, a chassis lube, a check and fill of all under-the-hood fluids, and much more with no appointment. We're fast, we're good, we're complete. Police departments, you just can't be. Jiffy Lube Complete, the stamp of a savvy driver. Now a free car wash at Jiffy Lube, 10th Street and NP Avenue, Fargo.
We are at halftime. The Bison lead the Sioux in the 89th meeting between these two schools, seven to nothing, as you watch the University of North Dakota marching band here at Memorial Stadium in Grand Forks. Bison leads seven to nothing. The weather, it is snowing. It's coming down harder by the minute. University of North Dakota is certainly one of the best educational institutions in the country. Here's more on that. Farming in the Red River Valley, the heartland of America, has many benefits. However, if an accident happens or a disabling condition occurs, the operation of the farm is slowed or stopped for a while. I know the day uh, that I looked out the bedroom window and heard the wind down there. It's a lot of things that went through my mind. I just, first of all, I didn't even know if he was alive. Yeah. With rehabilitation, technology, and determination, farmers have met challenges and returned to their occupation. There are different ways of doing their tasks, but yes, they can be done. The biggest reason he's here is because he wanted to be here. He really worked hard at it. With this determination and comprehensive rehabilitation from the Medical Center Rehabilitation Hospital at the University of North Dakota, a number of farmers have returned home with their families. Comprehensive rehabilitation includes physical therapy, occupational therapy, prosthetics, orthotics, nursing, psychology, chaplaincy, social services, speech, and audiology. The rehabilitation center is located in the medical park complex on South Columbia Road in Grand Forks. For the Medical Center Rehabilitation Hospital at the University of North Dakota, I'm Karen Bommersbach. University of North Dakota President Tom Clifford. Tom, my first question is, when are we going to get a dome stadium in Grand Forks? Well, we're not going to get a dome stadium, but we're going to have the uh, artificial surface next year anyway. I think after this game, you'll have to. Oh, yeah. What we really need is the dome, though, after this. <laughs> now, you're sitting outside uh, through all of this, aren't you? I haven't been, and uh, it's very, very cold. I'll tell you, I'm chilled. It, uh, the whole crowd here, I think, has been very done very well to stay with us. We've had a good attendance, but uh, it's extremely cold in the stands. So raw. You know, I told you we uh, had two minutes to fill here, and you said that's the best break we've had all day. <laughs> that's right. Well, they played pretty good uh, football, considering. I mean, it's very difficult for the team. But I think they both have done well. They, they can't do their best, but they're really in there trying. I see we have another interested observer up in the press box. He's uh, taken refuge in the warmth up there. Your new athletic director, Gino Gasparini. Now, he was in Boston last night to coach the hockey team. Now he flies in today to catch the football game. He's flying back to Boston today to get back to the second game of the series tomorrow. Would you think he's trying to impress the boss here? I don't know about his travel expenses, but that's a good idea to be here. Uh, he's commanding and he's stretching him a little bit to be AD and coach, but he's doing a great job. Let's uh, ask you about that, too. Now, Gino is going to do double duty here for a little, bit, a little while, isn't he? At least for this year. Uh, we couldn't very well change at the beginning of the season, but uh, he's going to look at it and evaluate it for whatever best for the whole program he'll do this spring. Well, look who's here right now. Why don't you step in here, Gino? <laughs> Gino has come out of the press box. He's been in the press box. Look at that. He's warm. <laughs> Your eyes don't look red to me. No, I'll tell you what. My arms are tired. I flew a long way. <laughs> now, tell me, when do you fly out of here? Well, I'll try to get out this, this evening if I can. Uh, we'll see how the weather holds and whether I can or not. Uh, if not, uh, my assistant will make his debut behind the bench, I guess. I've talked to you about five days after you took the job. You said you didn't know if the uh, uh, athletic director's job was a promotion or a curse. How do you feel about it now? Well, I'll tell you, I've, uh, I'm getting a fast indoctrination into the job, and I guess just being here is one. Uh, fortunately, I'm kind of bumping up some space up there with KNOX Radio and sitting in the warmth, and I probably should be out there with President Tom out there in the cold, but uh, so far it's going very well. I've enjoyed it immensely. Gino, thanks for stopping by. Thank you very much. President Clifford, nice chatting with you. Oh, thank you. All right. Ed, I'll say one thing. Uh, we have to like the change, too. You and I have done quite a few uh, hockey games over in the arena when Carl Miller was here as the athletic director, and the arena is uh, Gasparini's building, and we'd get cold chicken sandwiches. Now, 
an Italian athletic director. Pizza, we baby. Get pizza. <laughs> a big vote for Gino. All right, we are at halftime. North Dakota State leads North Dakota 7 to nothing, and we'll be back. Come on, boy. Come on. <laughs> of a new generation. This is a showroom, like any other car dealer's showroom. This is a car lot with acres of new cars, like any other car dealer's. But this car dealer is different. This is Selland Pontiac GMC. They have just one factory sticker price, not two or three. Your cost is as low as possible. Their professional sales staff is the most experienced in the area. They know their product and their service you can trust. All at Selland Pontiac GMC, home of total customer satisfaction, South Moorhead. This is the new taco salad from Taco Bell, the salad in a bowl. You can eat. The precious things from Taco Bell, served up in a flake of flower shell. That's my bowl. Taco salad, ooh, what a treat. I'm going to eat the bowl, but I'm going to break it first. Just made for you in a bowl you can eat. Oops, all gone. Guess you'll just have to try one for yourself. You know where. Taco Bell, it's just made for you. New car, it's already begun to rust. Behind rear wheels, inside doors, and around bumpers. The process starts and won't stop. Unless, Unless you, you rust, rust proof. proof. The professionals at Tidy Car can rust proof your car and guarantee it in writing. Tidy Car rust proofing neutralizes existing rust and seals out air, salt, and moisture. The trade in value of your car increases, road noise is deadened, and metal strength is maintained. You lose money with rust, so depend on people you can trust. At Tidy Car, they do more than just shine cars. Back in Grand Forks, Ed Schultz along with Rod Higgins, Pat Sweeney, and Dana Mock. We're at halftime. The Bison leads 7 to nothing over the University of North Dakota. Uh, this looks more like a crowd for a spring practice, a spring game, than it does for a Bison Sioux football game. They're uh, talking about the nickel trophy down there at midfield. That, of course, goes to the winning team of this series. Uh, it's in Grand Forks today, but it has not stayed here since 1980. Uh, when the University of North Dakota won that football game by a score of 38 to 20. That was back in 1980. Let's take a look now at North Dakota State University. North Dakota State University is justifiably proud of both its Bison football team and its campus in Fargo, where nearly 10,000 students attend classes. NDSU's new music education center stands as striking evidence of North Dakota's commitment to higher education. This facility truly shows what alumni, the community, and state can do cooperatively. This fall, yet another cooperative effort is taking shape at NDSU. Control Data Corporation of Minneapolis, the North Dakota Economic Development Commission, and NDSU have jointly announced that NDSU will be the site of a new North Dakota Engineering Center for High Technology Transfer. The new center will put the Economic Development Commission in a much better position to attract new high-tech industries to North Dakota. It will also serve existing businesses in developing high-tech concepts for computer design and manufacturing, and will provide the NDSU College of Engineering and Architecture a strong educational tool for keeping students and faculty abreast of the rapidly changing and expensive world of high technology. NDSU, through its new center, will be given access to Control Data's mainframe computer and its worldwide resources. Dr. Joseph Stanislao, the dean of the NDSU College of Engineering and Architecture, sees a broad role for the new center. Let's assume that a small industry here in North Dakota wanted to redesign their product. And they wanted to do it in such a way that they could not afford to build the model and go through all the research and development, they can come to the center. We will try to simulate some of these problems, seek out alternatives, and then translate these alternatives to that prospective industry. 
Looking down the road to the future of high technology in the state, Dean Stanislao sees the new high-tech center as being a harbinger of things to come at NDSU. I believe that the center is just the starting point, and it's going to ultimately be an integral part of higher education in terms of looking at more complex and global problems and interfacing ultimately with the region and the constituency of both industry and the business of North Dakota. The new center is an illustration of how an institution like NDSU pays interest on the investment the public makes in it. In the long run, those returns far exceed Thank the you. investment. Thanks, Lee. <laughs> well, we're at halftime with about uh, five minutes and 50 seconds left of our halftime respite. The North Dakota State Bison leading the University of North Dakota Sioux seven to nothing on the strength of a three-yard touchdown run by James Molstreet with 43 seconds left in the first half. Ken Kubish's uh, extra point kick, and there are our seven points. Uh, bad weather, but uh, a pretty well-played first half. There were a few fumbles, uh, and the wind had a lot to do with uh, what the teams were going to do offensively and defensively. All right, we're going to have one more look at the one touchdown of the first half. Here you'll see Bentram giving off to Molstreet on the pitchback, and he's heading towards that corner, and he's got enough to get in for the only touchdown of the ball game. We have uh, six television stations carrying this uh, game across the state. Right now, let's uh, take time out for a station break. We've got two truckloads of these good-looking marquee bromes on the ground now at Berkey Lincoln Mercury in Fargo. Each one is equipped with the kind of electronic equipment you want on your family car. They're all 1985 models, and they're discounted over $2,300 under factory list. They're a great value for the dollar. See them now. Fine cars, great prices, and good service at Berkey Lincoln Mercury in Fargo. Let Lenny's Incorporated show you how to cut your fuel bills and put more money in your pocket with the revolutionary Lennox Pulse Furnace. The Lennox Pulse Furnace is up to 97% efficient. It burns almost all the fuel, sending more heat into your home and less up the chimney. If you want to save this winter, let the experienced experts at Laney's Incorporated help you out. With over 90 years combined experience, they know how to do the job right. Get the Lennox Pulse Furnace from Laney's Incorporated, Fargo. WDAY-TV, Channel 6, Fargo. Back in Grand Forks, Ed Schultz along with Rod Higgins, Pat yes, Sweeney, please. and Dana Mock. One, two, three. Well, here's the official first half stats. Uh, first downs, the Bison with Hello nine, there. and uh, uh, six of those yes. coming Holly in at the uh, second five. period, going against the win. Five first downs for the Sioux. Rushing yardage, 161 yards for the Bison. The bulk of those yards in the second quarter. Uh, right on uh, the 100 mark for the Bison, uh, for the Sioux. Passing yardage, there you go with this weather. No passing yardage whatsoever. So the total yards are all in the rushing department. Each team with a pair of turnovers. There's only been the one penalty, and that was for roughing the kicker. Well, I think the Sioux have got to be happy with the way they have defended Jeff Ventram, the number one rusher in the nation. He's carried the football 13 times today. Uh, last week he carried 13 times for 178 yards. Today he's only gotten uh, 32 yards. Longest carry of the day for James Molstry uh, is 16 yards, Chad Stark 16 yards, and Bench from 15 yards. One thing North Dakota Sioux have been able to do is to hold this Bison offense down from making the big play. And all season long, Raj, this has been a big play offense. The, actually, this Bison offense has really only been tested in one football game this year. Uh, and that was against Mankato State when they lost by a score of 28 to 21. Going into the fourth quarter of games this year, the Bison average a 26-point lead. Now, that is in, its, in itself an awesome statistic. They are averaging 43 points a game. The Sioux, I think, have played a tremendous football game. And uh, the Sioux, I bet they're really commiserating down in that dressing room the fact that, that they did not get on the scoreboard at all in the first half, but also that they did not get on the scoreboard first because they had the first big opportunity of the ball game they were down knocking on the door uh, when they fumbled at the three-yard line, and it was recovered by the Bison. And the Bison, uh, in that big drive of theirs, 
Uh, they didn't score on that drive, but they moved up field where they, they made the big gamble, didn't want to punt into the wind, went for it on fourth down, and then moved the ball right down the field. The next time they got it, uh, it was a touchdown for the Bison. Down on the sideline, he head coach Pat Burns is with Pat Sweeney. Let's go to that. Patrick, what'd you tell your team at halftime? Well, we went over some things, some adjustments that we got to make defensively to stop that dive play inside. And we told our people we're still within striking distance. We've got 30 more minutes of football, and we just got to come out to play to win right now and make some plays. Specifically, what'd you have in mind on defense? Well, just uh, we just got to play a little bit harder. They're slipping and sliding out there, and we're not. They're getting some good holes inside, and we got to get a little more physical inside. Okay, good luck, Pat. Thank you. Head coach Pat Burns, and we are awaiting the Bison as you see him down in the end zone. Don Morton is leading him out onto the field, and we will also get a word with Don Morton with Dana Mock on the Bison sideline. Bison leading 7 to nothing. The Sioux, uh, as we mentioned, have played excellent defense here in this football game so far today. Uh, they lead the conference in three defensive categories, scoring defense, giving up only 11 points a game, rushing defense, giving up 109 yards a game, and total defense, giving up only 311 yards per game. The Bison have rushed for 161 yards here in the first half, so that has uh, knocked that rushing uh, statistic out of the whack a little bit. But uh, there's no doubt about it that uh, the Sioux have played an excellent defensive first half, and they are definitely in the ball game. Dana Mock is getting a hold of head coach Don Morton on the sideline. Let's go down to Dana. Don, what would you tell your troops at halftime? Are you going to make any major changes at all? No, we just got to keep running the football. We got to establish a running game. We definitely have to get something going outside to loosen things up inside, but just play great defense and control the ball on offense. Are they surprising you with anything on defense? No, no. Neither team has seen anything new. Thank you, Don. Good luck to you. Ed? Head coach Don Morton of North Dakota State. We'll be back for the start of the second half in a moment. Driving a new car or van from Francis Peterson's has never been easier. Now get 10.9 financing and all new 84 and 85 Renault Alliances and Encores. Only 10.9 annual percentage rate financing. But hurry, this is a limited time offer to qualified buyers. Or ask for details to lease a well-equipped family-sized Dodge Caravan while they last as low as $2.70 a month with immediate delivery. You owe it to your pocketbook to visit Francis Peterson's 45 years, your friendly family dealership, Moorhead. People of all ages are enjoying more physically active lifestyles. It's fun, it's healthy, and it's important. Your present physical condition and your fitness plan are important too. The sports medicine department of the Dakota Medical Center will determine your strength and flexibility, ideal body weight, offer exercise and nutritional plans, and do cardiovascular testing. You take time for your sports, take time for your life. Visit the sports medicine department, Dakota Clinic, Fargo. There's Brian Waltz uh, in our end zone camera. They brought him down about 30 feet because the wind was whipping too high. There's Brian doing a great job. This is supposed to be a glorious business, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Brian is doing a great job. He's out of Pearl, Minnesota. The Bison will take the second half kickoff. As it goes into the end zone, Stacy Robinson can't get a hold of it. It goes out of the end zone. And North Dakota State leading 7 to nothing will start this second half on offense. You heard both uh, football coaches before the start of the second half. No major changes by anybody. The Sioux, according to Pat Burns, feel pretty comfortable about the way they play. They're still within striking distance. As the snow is really coming down right now, folks, uh, the field's starting to get a little bit more and more white by the minute especially the end zones, and uh, it might be hard for the officials to spot the ball here with these conditions. Bentram and company at the 20-yard line. 5-2 defense for the Sioux. No changes there. Split back behind Bentram. They'll operate into a strong win. On first down, Bentram tries to run the option. He falls down at the 19-yard line. The uh, footing is going to get worse as this game goes on. Uh, we showed you a shot of the field before the game. And uh, you take a look at it now, and you can see where it's getting chewed up. It was an excellent, uh, top-notch condition uh, prior to the start of this game. But uh, the wear and tear is starting to show. There you see Pat Burns on the sideline. Burns in his fifth year with a 32-17 and 17 record. And the handoff goes inside, and uh, that's going to be stopped by official flags. I think the 
Offensive right tackle jump for the Bison. Yep, that's the indication. The penalty is against North Dakota State. And that is only our first penalty of the game from the line of scrimmage. That's right. The other one was a roughing a kicker. That's going to go back five yards against North Dakota State. It'll be second down and 15 now. As we said, Pat Burns in his fifth year has a 32-17 and no tie record as coach here at the University of North Dakota. Don Morton in his sixth year has got a national title under his belt and 52 wins and 14 losses. Ventrum now faced with a second down and 15. Bosch goes in motion. First time we've seen that today. Handoff inside. Chad Stark gets the five yards back and maybe a little bit more. Brings it out to the 21-yard line. It'll be second down and nine for North Dakota State. Here it is. Ventrum going along the line and gives off the stock again. He uh, shakes off that initial tackler and moves forward for six yards. It'll bring up a third down for the Bison and about ten and a half. As you see Don Morton on the far side of the field with his running back, Chad Stark, as Molstry and close to the setbacks now for North Dakota State. 5-2 defense for the Sioux. Option short side of the field. This is Molstry going to have a hard time getting outside as number 90, Holmquist. And then Mark Dempsey coming up from the corner. They combined on him and nowhere to go. Had him pinned to the sideline. There it is, there it is again. Is Dempsey coming up and Holmquist. When I was playing quarterback at Moorhead State, Dave Olson was the defensive coordinator. He is now the defensive coordinator here at the University of North Dakota. Let's go down to Pat Sweeney on the Sioux sideline. Ed Rodge just talked to Tony Dorso, the Sioux quarterback. He says he's a little sore, but he thinks he'll be okay. He says Tony Mizzou seems okay. We'll see how they play in the second half. Boy, there's that wind again with that punt. Uh, didn't go anywhere. No, it certainly didn't. Uh, we had the report from the sideline with Pat Sweeney. You heard him. And uh, Dorso, the quarterback for the University of North Dakota, is going to start this second half. Excellent field position for the Sioux's uh, first possession here in the second half. And Mizzou, Tony Mizzou, is in there at fullback. Ball is at the 33-yard line. This is Willis Jaycox, and about a yard loss on that one as Todd debates the free safety, and Flint Fleming and Dana Muehlhauser are in on the stop that time for North Dakota State. You think they're worried about the pass when the, the free safety makes the initial hit? <laughs> are they playing close to the line of scrimmage? There's Jaycox, the ball carrier for uh, North Dakota. You know that the Sioux did not even attempt to pass in the first half. They've yet to throw a football here in this football game. They've got... A strong wind at their back and a whole lot of snow with it. Ball's at the 33-yard line now. Second and 10. There it now, comes. Dorso looking. Throws down the sideline, and that's going to be incomplete. And he had a right shot at it. Pads. Right. He, I think his feet slipped out from under him as he was reaching for the ball. But he was open. There was a defender over there, but they both looked like they were frozen. Certainly did, and uh, the intended receiver that time was number 32, Tracy Martin. 6'2", 190 pounder, he's a sophomore. And uh, boy, was the Bison secondary really playing back off of that one. Of course, they say in weather like this, uh, the offense has the advantage because the quarterback knows where the receiver is going to be and the receiver knows where he's going to break. Right now, at the top of your screen, the Bison secondary has given him a big cushion and was and uh, Dorso wants to take advantage of it. But he is sacked back there by Fleming. Fleming, Fleming uh, right. gets him, and uh, Dorso throws the football into the dirt just in time to prevent the big loss. Some of the Bison fans down below uh, wanted to see a flag on that one for intentional grounding, but there was a man in the area. That was Mizzou, the fullback, out of the backfield in the flat that time, so Dorso did the right thing. We are field going to have a time. field goal attempt, and this is going to be a 50-yard field goal attempt with a strong win. Uh, at his back, and uh, the field goal, this will John be Roche. John Roche. Snap is down. The kick is up. It's long enough, and it is good. A beautiful field goal by John Roche, the place kicker for North Dakota, and it is 7-3, Bison lead, as the Sioux have gotten on the board. We'll be right back. Get the action pack advantage. Your style says action. 
Innovative, exciting, yet practical. The Action Pack checking account of Metropolitan Federal works to your advantage. Action Pack gives you interest on your checking account without having to maintain a minimum balance. And you'll find the special rates on homeowner and auto insurances a real bonus. There's more, like discounts when you travel or shop, a smart value at $5 a month. Check out Action Pack at Metropolitan Federal. It's to your advantage. In all the world, there are but a few automobiles that can be considered works of art. Valley Imports invites you to inspect four Audi, cars of distinction, Volkswagen built with technical excellence, Porsche, a passion for performance, Mercedes-Benz, and the highest regard for safety. Automobiles engineered like no other cars in the world. At the Valley's home of fine automobiles, Valley Imports Fargo. Well, I'll give you another look at the field goal and the reaction of the kicker, John Roche. He gets it off. Let's see now. Did it make it? Is it going to make it? Is it? Well, yeah, I think I got it. I did. <laughs> okay. The and Roche, the board. Uh, you know, they scored only three points last week, Ed, and it was a field goal by Roche. So he's done all the scoring in the last couple of weeks. Seven to three, the Sioux are on the board, and they've got the wind at their back, and that is momentum as Roche kicks a low one. It'll be taken by Meski at the 20-yard line. He comes up the middle to the 25, and that's it. The footing is really tough right now, and uh, turnovers are, and field position are going to be a big factor in this football game. 11.48 remaining in the third quarter. We've got a lot of football left. As uh, the Bison will go with two tight ends on offense now as... Miles Bosch comes out of the game and Meski comes in. Meski and Osley are the tight ends. Stacy Robinson, the lone wide receiver. Ventrum, the quarterback, on first and 10 from their own 25-yard line. 7-3, Bison lead. Handoff goes inside to Chad Stark. He takes it to the 22-and-a-half-yard line, and it'll be second down there for the herd. Steve Johnson came up from the corner to make the final hit. We've Very little pickup. We've seen a couple of turnovers here today. And while the Bison are on offense, we should mention that they are plus 13 in the turnover column this season. They're averaging 6.8 yards per rush, but that has been drastically cut here today by that tough Sioux defense. Second down and seven now for North Dakota State at their own 28-yard line. Bentram wants to throw it, looking for Robinson. Bentram turns it up. Shy of the 30-yard line, make it the 29-yard line, and that'll be short of a first down. Did a lot of running laterally, but uh, not too much forward. He picks up about uh, maybe a yard on the play. Here's Bentram, rolling and looking. Now decides to see some daylight, no open receivers. So he uh, starts coming up field, and uh, he is picked off after a gain of one yard. Paul Holmquist, the defensive right end, uh, made the stop. It is third down now, and let's make it six for the Bison from their own 29-yard line. Bentram has two wide receivers in the ball game now. Handoff inside, Chad Stark, and nothing there. Number 96, Lee Topic, uh, got a hand on him and tripped him up. So the Sioux will get the football back here with 10 minutes remaining in the third quarter. And presumably, they're going to get pretty good field position because Phil Osley, number 80 for the Bison, is going to have to punt into another strong win. So the Sioux should get good field position. There's nothing wrong with our cameras, folks. That's all snow you're seeing coming right into that end zone shot. As the yard markers are really getting tough to see here. High snap. Osley grabs it, gets a kick away. It's a high kick. It's going to be held up in Bison territory at the 44. Oh, get a hand on it. <laughs> the one player slipping and sliding. I can't pick up his number from here. Number 24 of the Reese uh, of Bison. Uh, he had a shot at it. His feet betrayed him, and the ball rolled back another five yards uh, for the Sioux. And again, excellent field position. Boy, when you're going into that wind and you have to punt. You got to expect the other team to be in great shape when they get their hands on the football. The ball's at the Bison 40-yard line. First and 10 for the University of North Dakota. Dorso, the quarterback. Eye formation. 
Mizzou. Now this is Tracy Martin. He goes right side. And excuse me, there is a new quarterback in the ball game for University of North Dakota. That is Jeff Ramey. He's 6'2", 195 pounds. He wears number 15. He did the work last week against Omaha. There's some uh, fired up folks here at the ball game today. Second down now is the carry by Willis Jaycox that time was just shy of the 35 yard line, make it the 36. It'll be second down and six. Ramey the quarterback, I formation. This is Mizzou inside. There's a flag on the play. I believe the right guard for UND, Wally Keller, moved a little bit too early. 6'4", 240, and Keller is a big dude. Let's go down to the Bison sideline and Dana Mock. Yeah, the Bison say they've been have, having trouble moving the ball because they just can't get their footing. The linemen say they, they can get the blocks, but they just can't push anybody. So it's a, it's a standoff with the line of scrimmage, and they can't move anybody. Back to you. Okay, Dana, Dana Mock in the huddle over there with North Dakota State, and that seems pretty evident. That's why the Bison or the Sioux have not been able to get outside their tackles today because the footing is so uh, terrible here in Grand Forks. Any field would be terrible under these conditions. Second down now and 10. Toss to the outside, Jay Cox at the line of scrimmage. He's drilled by Flint Fleming, the sophomore defensive tackle number 87. And here's the replay. Uh, Jay Cox will try to hurdle the tackler here, but uh, as, he, as he does, he runs right into Fleming, and Fleming put a big hit on him. Uh, no uh, yardage at all on the play. And with the new quarterback in there, will they put it up in the air? Well, we'll see. It's third down and eight now for University of North Dakota. Ball's at the 38-yard line of North Dakota State. Ramey, the quarterback, has two wide receivers, one to each side of the field, drop back pass. He wants to throw it. Across the middle and almost picked off by Chris Service, the defensive back, overthrown intended for the wide receiver, Dennis Smith, the tight end, Dennis Smith, across the middle, number 80. Here's a look at it from our end zone camera. He has plenty of time. They gave him a lot of protection. Again, of course, that defensive line can't really blitz in these kind of conditions, uh, again, with the footing. But uh, he had all kinds of time to throw, but overshot the, the receiver by a wide margin. Glenn Kutra will go in punt formation now. He'll be standing at his own 48-yard line, and he will easily be able to hit the coffin corner on this one. He's got a strong wind at his back, plus he's averaging 38 yards a punt anyway. It's the first time uh, Sue have had the punt since back in the first period. Uh, he puts it into the end zone, so the Bison will get it at their own 20. 7-3 to three is our score, and we'll be back. At Sigco Research, we know the thing northern growers want most is results. Last year on my farm, Sigco yield as good as anyone, but the dry down was faster. So at our research facilities, we're breeding northern corn hybrids for early maturity, high yields, and fast dry down. Sigco does their testing up here, so Sigco knows what we're up against. Sigco Research, where research breeds results. Experience the Browning difference. It's pride, satisfaction, reliability, and adventure in hunting. It's waiting for you at Fargo Moorhead's Browning dealer, the outdoorsman. From Browning's down silver tip hunting coat to the new Browning pump BPS with the three choke and vector system from fine over and unders to side by sides to big game rifles, automatics, bolt to lever actions, it's the best in Browning products. Quality you'll experience in the field. Browning's best at the outdoorsman, Village West Shopping Center, Fargo. 7-3 ball game, the Bison in the lead, and have the football. Ventrum now, and the Bison start at their own 20-yard line on first down. And Ventrum trying to get outside on first down. He's going to keep the football to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. Now, that's one thing that we mentioned earlier is that the Sioux have had great pursuit to the football this year and even with a bad footing they've been able to get outside and contain an offense that likes to get to the outside into the perimeter. Bethlehem keeps rolling but uh, keeps looking upfield for some kind of an opening but all he sees is green jerseys. 7.25 remaining in the third quarter as you see the crowd on the far side of the field has diminished to just the band. 7-3. to three. Bison lead. Handoff goes inside. This is Chad Stark to the 25-yard line. It'll be third down and five. And 
a good hit by the uh, linebacker Hedberg. Now, third downs have been pretty good to the Bison this year. They've been able to convert on third down 60% of the time as you look at Chad Stark uh, leaving the field. Let's go down to Pat Sweeney on the Sioux sideline. Sioux training staff has told me that Tony Dorso simply has a sore shoulder. He apparently got uh, a little bit too much pain on that last series. Jeff Ramey's in there. They don't know if Dorso will be back. We'll just have to wait and see. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Pat. Of course, uh, Dorso got the Sioux in position for their only score on the day. Of course, it was a 50-yard field goal by Roach. <laughs> he really had it way out there. And there seems to be a whistle, and Hagfors, the center, once again for the Bison, wants a dry football on third down and five from the Bison 25-yard line. We're in the third quarter. 6.40 remaining. Clock is running. 7-3 to three Bison lead as you look at a very soupy field here in Grand Forks. Bentram on the option slips and falls at the 28-yard line. And that's going to that's going to bring up another fourth down situation as the punting team comes in for North Dakota State. And again uh, was the uh, free safety Doug Plain making that tackle. Uh, ordinarily he'd be nowhere near the line of scrimmage when Bentram would start rolling out. He'd be uh, suspecting a pass, but he doesn't have to worry about it today. No, he doesn't. Both teams have played very conservative football. As you see, even the big trees are having a hard time standing up here <laughs> at Dakota or at uh, Memorial Stadium. High snap to Osley. He gets it away. This one's not going to be any better than the first two in this quarter. And this one does take a little bit of a bison bounce. But once again, the North Dakota Sioux with 546 remaining in the third quarter are going to get excellent field position. And the ball, let's see where they spot it, is going to be on the 46-yard line in Bison territory. As Ramey comes back in, there's the punt as it was a high, short kick. Now, Kutra, who's been punting for North Dakota, has been able to get uh, that punt very low against the wind, and it has been more effective than the Bison punter today. That was a sixth punt for the Bison. The Sioux have only punted four times and only once since the first period. First down, Ramey has an eye formation. Mizzou, the ball carrier to the inside to the 45-yard line, and that's about it. Well, this football game, Raj, is just going to come down to just guts on the line of scrimmage. Whoever wants this thing the most is going to win it because uh, these are not ideal conditions for football. And, you know, since the first period, uh, actually, there hasn't been too many fumbles. Uh, they've been hanging on to the football. We saw but John a turnover Roach. could really uh, change this game around in a hurry. You bet. Ramey runs the option. He slips and falls in the backfield. Now, what can you say? It's just very hard to run an offense in these conditions. Ramey, and you know, a lot of times coaches in situations like this, when the conditions are like this, they'll make a change at quarterback just to get a dry player in the game to handle the football and uh, have a place to wipe his hands as Mizzou is coming and off he, the he field on third down. He was limping a little as he came off. Nelson replaces him in that backfield. But Tom uh, Nelson. Even a dry quarterback couldn't stand up on that turf that time, so the Sewer faced with third down and 11. In Bison territory at the 47-yard line. Back to pass. Ramey knocked down, picked <laughs> off at the line of scrimmage. It was knocked down and grabbed by one of the linemen. And that is Dana Mulehauser for North Dakota State. Earlier this season, Flint Fleming, the other Bison defensive tackle, picked off a pass against South Dakota State. Take a look at this. This is very unusual. Let's see if we can get... Uh, he, did, he didn't just bat it. I think he caught it. It first looked like there was a deflection, but on the replay there, it looks like uh, he just out and out made an interception. Well, even if the Bison don't do anything here, they got to be pleased with that. They gained about 30 yards in field position. So Bentram, from his own 47-yard line, gives it to Molstray. He gets to the 49, and look at that Sioux defense. Sioux on a nice defensive play one more time. It was Paul Holmquist in on the stop for North Dakota. He's 6'3", 225, only a junior. He'll be back for Dave Olson next year. I asked Pat Burns earlier this week, why has your football team been so much better than it was a year ago? And he made two very interesting points. Number one is that they've had a practice facility. 
they built a highway here behind Memorial Stadium, and that's where they used to practice football, and they really had a makeshift football field for practice last year. They didn't want to practice on their game field, and he feels that this year they've been able to develop a little bit more consistency. And talking about consistency, there's your nose tackle, Randy Hollis, right. again hit on a stop on Ventral. Boy, does he move along that line of scrimmage. 280 pounder, but boy, he's mobile. Here's a super slow-mo by our camera crew and Jim Heilman on the slow-mo. Now there's the throw by Ramey. It goes off the hands of the nose guard, Nielsen, off his head too, and into the hands of Dana Muehlhauser. Okay, I did know that. I thought I saw a deflection. Yep, you called her. <laughs> Third down now and seven for North Dakota State. It's right at the midfield stripe. Ventrum on the option, turns it up and brings it to the 45 of North Dakota, but he's gonna be short of a first down. Now, what are the Bison going to do? The last time they punted, they only got 16 yards on the on the change of possession. Well, Don Morton in the first half, they had the ball at their own 15. They went for it. Now they're going to go for it again as Miles Bosch comes into the ball game with the play, and Terry Meske goes out as you see the replay on Ventrum's run there. Morton with a gutsy call one more time from his own 45-yard line. Two wide receivers in the ball game. Ventrum under center on fourth down and a couple of yards for a first at the 45 of North Dakota. 5-2 defense for the Sioux, long count. Ventrum on the option, he's nope. not gonna get it. A nice defensive play that time, number 17, Mark Dempsey, the cornerback, came right up and got in the backfield. There it is again, Ventrum looking for some running room. He wants to keep it all the way here, but there's just nowhere to go. Dempsey makes the first hit and then a whole host of uh, Sioux defenders finish off the play. And that weak side linebacker, Holmquist, is in there one more time. So the Sioux take over on downs at their own 45-yard line, first and 10. Ramey, the quarterback, now for North Dakota as Mizzou and Jaycox are back in the ball game. This is Mizzou to the line of scrimmage, and that's it as John Dunbar is there to make the stop for North Dakota State. Flint Fleming was also in there. As we look at it from our ground camera, Muehlhauser made the first contact, and then Dunbar, a senior linebacker who played on that national championship team a year ago, number 93, closed down to make the stop from the weak side. Second down now for UND at their own 47-yard line. They've got the wind at their back for another minute and 44 seconds, left in the third quarter. Handoff inside, Mizzou still on his feet, and he gets a couple of extra tough yards across midfield to the 48-yard line of North Dakota State. Bison leads seven to three. Clock down to a minute and a half in the third period as we watch Mizzou here. Breaks off one tackle and then uh, moves forward and is down. I think it's fair to say that no team has really won the war in the trenches today. <laughs> no, they haven't. <coughs> There's our up top cameras today getting a workout. They might be the only two we have left before this thing's over with. <laughs> Ramey on an option. Stopped short of the first down. There was a crease there, Rods, but yes, he just couldn't get to it. Right. He couldn't get the footing. And now, will the Sioux do any gambling? They've got the wind at their back for about 52 more seconds. They'll probably want to use that to kick the ball away and uh, pin the bison down deep. Dana Muehlhauser was in on the stop that time. As there's a timeout on the field as we take a look at Dave Olson, the defensive coordinator for North Dakota, and also Pat Burns, the head coach. But a big decision here for the Sioux because they, they're fourth and one at about midfield. Well, they've got to punt it now with the wind, to, I with would the wind, think. They're gonna, they, they talked it over, and uh, they will kick the ball away. Most of the offense that we've seen here today has been straight ahead. One thing we have not seen straight ahead is the world-class sprinter, Stacy Robinson, who set a school record last week for touchdown receptions in a season and also uh, career receptions for touchdowns. He holds both those records at North Dakota State. He has not been a factor in this ball game. This inclement weather and poor footing has taken Robinson right out of the game. Fourth down now for North Dakota. Boy, the bye's not going back very deep to field this either. No, they're not. They might. he'll kick it into the end zone. He's, he's now. looking for an angle. He gets it, too. Yeah, he's going to get a good roll. Oh! It's down at around the two-yard line. It might even be closer than that. 
beautiful kick. Well, with 44 seconds remaining in the third quarter, what a great kick by that man right there, Glenn Kuchera. And he look at his eyes. He, he was going to the corner. Well, somewhere in there is the pigskin going out of bounds at the two-yard line. There it is. We got it. Good good work, Bry. Now the Official task. almost went down, too. Yeah. The task now is up to that Bison offensive line to get something going, as you see the crowd here in Grand Forks today. Sioux linebackers playing a little bit tight as Bentram, taking no chances, goes on a quarterback sneak. They will, uh, I don't think they'll do anything fancy down here. They want to let that clock run down as much as they can so that if they do have to punt, uh, they will have the wind at their back. They'll be in no hurry coming out of that huddle. This will probably be the last play of the third quarter. 15 seconds remaining in the quarter as you look at Bentram from behind the offense. He goes hands off right side and met right away by Hedberg, the linebacker. Right. Greenlee's the linebacker, Greenlees. number 58. He plugged that hole in a hurry. Had some That's help from the Mike end Scadler. of the third quarter. The Bison lead, 7-3, to three, and we'll be back. We keep it moving. The 1985 Hondas have arrived and are now on display at Russ Honda West. This is the 85 CRX HF, HF meaning high fuel model, and it lives up to its name by squeezing 49 miles per gallon city and 54 miles per gallon highway to win first place in recent EPA tests. So if you're not getting 49 miles per gallon of gasoline on the car you're currently driving, maybe it's time to switch your brand of car. It's that simple. We are Russ Honda West, Fargo. Do-it-yourselfers, you just can't be. Jiffy Lube Complete. Women on the go, you just can't be. Jiffy Lube Complete. Jiffy Lube is an oil change with a major brand, a new oil filter, a chassis lube, a check and fill of all under-the-hood fluids, and much more with no appointment. We're fast, we're good, we're complete. Police departments, you just can't be. Jiffy Lube Complete, the stamp of a savvy driver. Now a free car wash at Jiffy Lube, 10th Street and NB Avenue, Fargo. I started with 90-minute photo for the convenience, but I've stuck with them for the quality. I've taken a lot of pictures, and I've learned to trust 90-minute photo for perfect prints every time. The whole system is fully automated, plus each negative and print is given a final color check. If it isn't just right, it's redone. That's quality you can't get from any other quick service film processor. With the holidays coming, don't forget to get your Christmas cards printed now. 90-minute photo, convenience and quality. We use Kodak paper for a good look. The only scoring in the third period, a 50-yard field goal by John Roche. We're 7-3. Uh, St. Cloud has moved out in front of Mankato State, 16-7 in the third quarter. Ed? Third down now for the Bison at their own five-yard line. Handoff. This is Chad Stark. He'll be short of the 10-yard line and short of the first down. So the Bison will be faced with a punting situation Start deep in their own territory, but they've got the win at their back. Now, this might be an interesting point here for University of North Dakota. Will they put a full heat on that punter when he's standing in his own end zone to try to break this game open? North Dakota trails 7-3 to here as we just start the fourth quarter in Grand Forks. The Sioux have got three receivers deep. They're standing way back at, the, at their own 45-yard line and standing way back in the end zone is Phil Osley. About eight yards deep in the end zone. The snap. It's a good one. Osley under pressure gets a nice kick away. It's going to be taken at midfield. This is Johnson to the outside and pulled down by Tom Gleason by North Dakota State. And the Sioux will take over. And please bear with us, folks. We can't see the yard markers. I think that's a 45-yard line of North Dakota State. It's close to it. It is. <laughs> Next week, North Dakota closes out a seven-game homestand 
with South Dakota, and there you see Phil Osley punting away from his own end zone. Pressure by Plain and Johnson from the outside that time. Good field position despite the wind of uh, aided punt, but uh, the Sioux on offense now go right into the uh, face of that biting gale. Ramey the quarterback. Handoff right side, Willis Jaycox. A couple of tough yards over the right tackle that time. Jim Hatterman, the right tackle for North Dakota, his 6'3", 265. As I was mentioning, next week, uh, UND closes out a seven-game uh, home season with an afternoon contest against the University of South Dakota. Then the Bison uh, will be home next Saturday at 1.30 against Morningside College, a much improved football team this year in the North Central. Second down now, and let's make it seven for the Sioux. Mizzou falls down in the backfield with poor footing, and Ramey falls on the football. They lose about three yards on that one. It'll be third down and nine. Well, that's it's so tough to play catch-up football in this kind of weather. Mizzou never really got his wheels turning on that one. And, you know, surprisingly, uh, that's the Sioux's first fumble since back in the first quarter. Uh, the way this ball game started out between the Bison and the Sioux it was like they were both going to have a case of fumbleitis all day, but they have been hanging on to the football. We've seen nothing fancy. Most of everything has been straight ahead or uh, in the uh, Bison offense. Bentram has been uh, rolling out looking for running room, but uh, most of uh, everything has been straight ahead, and they have been hanging on to the football. Third down now for North Dakota. Just something tells me there's just one big play that's going to win this thing. You keep waiting for it to happen, but yeah. the clock keeps winding down. 12.45 remaining in the ballgame. Third down and eight for the Sioux in Bison territory the 45. Man, Ramey no. out of the backfield is Jay Cox, but he'll be short of the first down as the Bison defense and Scott Shutt, the sophomore linebacker on the outside, makes the stop for North Dakota State. And Don Morton is really high on that this kid. Up, but number 80, Dennis Smith, the left end, is wide open down the middle uh, for the first down. But Ramey looked the other way, went to the right side uh, out there uh, to his running back, Jay Cox, and they don't get enough for the first down. But that's, uh, this, that's the first pass completion of the day uh, for the uh, Sioux. You know, Raj, that was a perfect example of how the field has really inhibited both offenses today. On a, on a dry field, Jay Cox could have gotten big yards on that. It's that low kick again, and he gets off a good one into the wind. And it takes the a roll, Sioux bounce. Too. Down to about the 10. And that's where the Bison will take over, first and 10 from about the 10, 10 and a half yard line. 7-3 Bison. We'll be back. I'm under a bit of stress. Uh, I don't think it shows. <laughs> um, but I worry about money. Uh, money for the future, for college, for retirement. Uh, not to mention protecting my family today. Here, take this. See how New York life agents like me can help fight financial stress. <laughs> what a relief. Now I've got a whole financial plan working for me. See a New York Life agent like Jim Trotman, Alan Rudel, or Phil Trotman. In all the world, there are but a few automobiles that can be considered works of art. Valley Imports invites you to inspect four Audi cars of distinction. Volkswagen built with technical excellence. Porsche, a passion for performance. Mercedes-Benz, and the highest regard for safety. Automobiles engineered like no other cars in the world. At the Valley's home of fine automobiles, Valley Imports Fargo. We've been talking about turnovers. Here's a position where the Bison definitely have to hang on to the football. A fumble here could be disastrous and change the whole complex of the ball game. No doubt about that. And that is Chad Stark, the ball carrier for North Dakota State. Let's go down to the Bison sideline and Dana Mock. And we're with offensive lineman Mike Carmody. He's got a cast on his hand. What's the situation, Mike? Well, the way it looks right now, I broke a bone in my hand, and I'm going to have surgery on Monday. We're going to put a plate in there, and Dr. Sasson thinks I might be able to practice on Wednesday. He thinks I should be able to, but if not, I'll be ready for St. Cloud. Very good. Thanks, Mike. Back up to you, Ed. Thank you, Dana. That's Mike Carmody you were listening to, folks. Offensive lineman for NDSU. He is out of the ball game with a broken hand. And on second down and a couple of yards, the ball goes to the left side of the offensive line. The ball carrier, Hank Close, that time for North Dakota State. 
Here's the first down play that uh, we saw a moment ago and Chad Stark picking his way. That's powerful. On third down and a yard, the Sioux defense digs in and digs in if you can in that stuff. <laughs> we didn't come here for nothing. Handoff, left side, Stark, big hole. He's got the first down and more. Across the 29 to the 30-yard line. And here it is again. This Stark just blowing through a big hole and uh, moves, uh, moves the ball out for another Bison first down. And uh, they, they were operating in the shadows. There's no shadows today, but the goalpost was right behind them. Uh, now they've got a little operating room with the wind at their back. Ten and a half minutes left in the game. Hand off again. Right side, this is Chad Stark, or James Molstry, the ball carrier. Bear with us, folks. We're having a hard time seeing the numbers on these kids in this kind of weather. That's Molstry, the ball carrier that time. As you see, the snow just continually comes down and through the course of the game, there you see it's gone from green to white. Pretty green surface earlier this afternoon. Hardly anybody uh, in this stadium. The near side has uh, got a pretty good crowd. Far side is pretty scarce. Second down now. Roll out, Bentram. Trying to get to the outside and out of bounds now at the... He couldn't get around that defensive right end, John Ulmer. He kept hey. stringing the play out. Put and on that net sound, Mike, because we're hearing something we don't want to hear. Ulmer strung that play out and got Bentram uh, out of bounds. Bentram kept trying to turn the corner, but uh, Ulmer played it well. It'll be third down now for North Dakota State. You see a few fans there on the far side of the field and the crowd there on the near side. Some very loyal UND fans braving this weather here this afternoon. Watching a well-played ball game. Third down now and five for the Bison. Handoff goes inside. This is Molstry, and he did not get the first down. It's decision time now for Don Morton, and they will punt the football away here on fourth down. And uh, the ball's on the 36-yard line. Fourth down and three, 930. Topic, uh, made the initial hit on that one. He's 6'3", 240-pound junior at that left tackle spot. Now uh, Phil Osley will go in punt formation, and he's going to be standing back at his own 20-yard line. Osley was a quarterback recruited to North Dakota State. They moved him to tight end. Snap to Osley. He gets it and gets a nice kick away with a win at its back. This is going to be taken by Plain on the far side, and he is out of bounds at... Uh, the 37 yard line. So uh, North Dakota will take over first and 10 in their own territory with 8.56 remaining in the ball game. Why is my headset sounding funny? I'm not getting any sound in it. Okay, well, give us a little bit, just not much. First down now for North Dakota. Higgy, let's figure out now. We're smart enough to see what yard line this is on. Is that the 32? I think it yeah, is. Yeah, it's the 32-yard <laughs> line, right? You are. There's a, let's see. Ramey never went down. Was there a whistle before the snap? Yeah, illegal I think procedure. Was, yep. Yeah, I think he backed away from the center before, and they're, they're nailed for illegal procedure. That'll cost them five. So it is first down now, and 15 for... The University of North Dakota. Eight minutes and 54 seconds left in the game. The Sioux trailing in this one by four points. They have the football, but they're faced with a first and 15 going into the strong wind. 8.54 remaining. First down and 15. Ramey the quarterback, I formation. Handoff inside. This is Tony Mizzou, and he is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Tom Nelson checking back into that uh, Sioux backfield. He's uh, giving a play to Ramey as he heads into the huddle. 8.30 remaining in the ball game.
And right now, the clock is starting to become an enemy of the North Dakota Sioux unless they can muster some offense here. They're not only fighting that Bison defense, they've got to work against just these terrible conditions here in Grand Forks today. Ramey back to pass. He's being pressured, and he's not going to get it away. Scott Shutt and Dana Muehlhauser in on the stop that time for North Dakota State, and that is a big sack as it gets the Bison about 10 yards in field position here with the wind at their back. I don't know how I would record this one. Half slip, half sack. But the, the end result is that the Sioux get pushed back some more, and now they'll have to kick the football away. Oh, third down, let's see. Will they try to go to the air again? Well, let's see. Got uh, some wide receivers. Tracy Martin is the wide, wide receiver now for University of North Dakota. Ramey has him in an eye formation on third down, and let's make it at least 20. Bootleg pass, being pressured again. Ramey gets away from one tackler, getting out of the pocket and pulled down from behind for maybe a couple of yard gain that time on the far side of the field. Chasing him down from behind that time for North Dakota State was Nielsen, number 94, Paul Nielsen, the nose guard. They almost get him back here for a long loss. It's uh, tough to pick up. I think that was Muehlhauser that he got away from. Now Ramey starts heading up field, but then he gets uh, caught from behind. Flint Fleming and Nielsen were the one players that uh, pulled Ramey down from behind. Now Kutra has the same chore that Phil Osley had in the previous quarter. He's got to boom this thing against a driving win. With 6.40 remaining in the ball game, clock is running. Kutra. Gets it away from his own 15, a low kick. It stopped right there at about the 40-yard line, and that's where the Bison take over, first and 10. So the Bison with the win in the fourth quarter and the clock on their side and a 7-3 lead have got an opportunity to do something with it. Now the test will really come for that Sioux defense, and they've done it all day long. One first down, and the Bison are in field goal range. Kenny Kubish can uh, really smack him from about 30 yards out consistently. And the wind is coming directly down the field. It's not a crosswind. On first down, they go to Chad Stark. He breaks it inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. And it'll be second down now for North Dakota State. Well, they're going to give Stark a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight. Six minutes and five seconds remaining in the ball game. The Sioux trying to knock off the Bison here and knock them out of that third spot in the national rankings in Division II football. Bentram turns it up, still on his feet, pitches it back. This is Hank close and out of bounds. What a great play by Bentram that time. That was about the best play you could make in a situation like this with these uh, I'm conditions. I'm surprised he gambled with the pitch back. Uh, when it looked like he was going to be tackled. There he goes. He cut in. The uh, defender there went for the pitch man. Ventrum kept it. And as he was getting pinned down, he uh, put it back to Close. And Close gets him about eight or ten more yards before he is pushed out of bounds. And they are now in field goal range, Ed. Let's go down to Dana Mock on the Bison sideline. They're wearing the field position. That's all they want to do is just hold on to the Sioux, and they'll just gradually keep getting down into Kenny Kubish's range, and that's range, and that's where they are now. Back up to you. Okay, thanks a lot, Dana. If you missed the first part, uh, all he said uh, was that the, the Bison are talking on the sideline about field position. That's their big concern right now with 5:25 remaining in the ball game, and the ball right now is at see the 10, the 15, about the 19-yard line. The 19-yard line is where North Dakota State has got a second down and eight. Ventrum now, the quarterback, turning it up at the 15 and pulled down there. A nice tackle by Plain, the safety that time, in on the stop for the University of North Dakota. You know, they say you can't tell the players without a scorecard. Well, the people who have uh, scorebooks or programs can't read them in the stands, and you can't uh, tell much about those bison right now. Those uh, white jerseys are just covered with layers of mud. Doug Plain uh, did a great job in pursuit that time from his free safety position on quarterback Jeff Bentram. It is third down and six for the Bison. The ball's at the 16-yard line of the University of North Dakota. Big third down for both teams with 4.30 remaining in the ball game. Bison leads seven to three. 
Handoff inside. This is Molstree. He'll be close to a first down with his momentum. Let's see where they spot it. James Molstree, the ball carrier that time for North Dakota State. Or excuse me, that's Hank Close. Well, we're guessing. 35 is close, 38 is Molstree. Uh, he's going to be about two yards shy. And are they going to go? Let's see. It looks like they are. They're not going to kick. Fourth and two, they're going to go for it. This kind of surprises me. Well, against that win, it's going to take a big play on offense for UND to move the football. So Morton is playing percentages here, and the Bison are going for it. On fourth and two, inside the 15-yard line. Ventrum, long count on the option. Pitches back. This is Molstreet. Molstreet turns it on. Touchdown, North Dakota State. Molstreet to the outside as Ventrum and the rest of the team mobs him in the end zone. As you see our sideline camera. He scored both of the touchdowns. That one, let's call it a 12-yard run. It looked like it went in from about the 12-yard line. He scored back in the second quarter on a three-yard plunge. And here it is again. Ventrum back to Molstreet. Looking upfield, tries to cut, kept his footing, uh, found the gap, and in he went. He's just diving in to get over that last stripe. James Molstry, his second touchdown of the ball game. The Bison are out in front 13 to 3. Cubish on to attempt the extra point. Brand comes with uh, three minutes hold. and 36 seconds left in the game. Bison have gone out in front 13 to 3 here in Memorial Stadium in Grand Forks. Brad Straup will hold. Kenny Kubish, snap is down, the kick is up. It's good. Bison lead 14 to 3, as you see once again, the dive by Molstreet into the end zone. And we'll be back. All you ghouls and goblins gather round. Time for chills and thrills, so party down. No matter who you like to bite, you're gonna want Coors and Coors Light tonight. Coors Light beer will be clear. Fun is everywhere. Get ready for excitement when Coors is on the scene. Cause anything can happen. <laughs> on a Coors and Coors Light Halloween. When you take one of these things up, you've got a crew to help. Test pilot Chuck Yeager for AC Delco. When it comes to my car or truck, I do the work myself. In 40 years, AC spark plugs have never let me down. And with today's technology, AC fire ring spark plugs are engineered to give you up to 30,000 miles reliable performance. Never wait for trouble. Go with AC fire ring spark plugs. Available at the Sturdivant Auto Parts store nearest you. Five-yard penalty. Five-yard penalty on the kickoff. The Sioux are offside on the try for extra point. So they'll move the ball up uh, five yards for the Bison kicking team. The Bison just scoring uh, on a fourth and two. It looked like a gamble. They uh, decided not to go for the field goal, try to pick up the first down. Well, they got more than they asked for. Instead of two yards, they got 12, a touchdown by Molstreet. And we'll take a look at that touchdown a little bit later, and we'll notice that Bentram was not even being pressured. I wonder if that was a pre-call to get the ball to Molstreet on the outside because Bentram made that pitch qu pretty quick on that play, and Molstreet just used his speed to the outside, and and took the angle, uh, what angle he did have. Let's go down to Dana Mock on the Bison sideline. Is there you see uh, the pitch back again. Dana? All right, Ed, I'll find out for you if it was a pre-planned pre pitch. Uh, no pressure on Ventrum, yet he still gave the ball to you. Why was it? Uh, because it was, a, it was a call 38 option. It was an audible at the line scrimmage, and he called 38 option, so it is pretty much a pre-planned pitch. You got a great block. Great block from Hank Close again. Thanks, James. Good luck to you. Back up to you, Ed. Okay, that was Dana Mock with James Molstry, who has scored two touchdowns today, and certainly enough, I thought that uh, Bentram pitched the ball early on that uh, touchdown, and it, it was a pre-called play. So the Bison uh, leading 14-3 with 3.36 remaining in the ball game. Ramey, the quarterback for, and there's Kerry Shelton, our sideline camera. I gave my duck cutting pass. Now, don't rip those, Kerry. <laughs> i got to use those next week if the birds in the state still hang around in this weather. Well, this is going to be a tough uh, tough one to call for University of North Dakota. Uh, Ramey back in there at quarterback. Uh, he's done a good job here in this second half, but it has just been uh, just so tough to move the football under these conditions. 
Now out of the I formation, North Dakota will operate. They need a couple of scores to win. Fumble. Ramey fumbles the snap and quickly falls on it. And right where the Sioux have got the football at the 20-yard line, Raj, I think is probably about the muddiest place in the field. That's a fumble number five uh, for the Sioux. And uh, as far as NDSU is concerned, they have fumbled three times in the ball game. You know, I knew you didn't miss a stat in basketball, but again in football, don't miss a thing. All right, it'll be. <laughs> <laughs> Ramey back to pass now, has both backs into the pattern. An underneath pass to the tight end, Kuchroy brings it across the 25 to the 26-yard line on a little tight end delay. Here it is again. Not a pretty pass by any means, but uh, it gets the job done. It almost went end over end, uh, but he connects with the tight end, and they have faced with a third down and about three and a half. Third down now, and a toss to the outside. This is Jacobs. He's got it. He's got the first down across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Ramey is a good thrower, and the play you saw before is not typical the way he can throw the football. Here's Jaycox cutting it inside. Now, UND plays their tailback so deep in the backfield because Jay Cox, Willis Jaycox, has got that great ability to read blocks, bounce to the outside, or bounce it back across the grain. But uh, today, that ability has not been seen here because the field's footing is so bad. Nelson comes in to replace Mizzou in that uh, Sioux backfield. This is Jay Cox. Nowhere to go. He draws a crowd. Nielsen, the nose guard, and Muehlhauser, the defensive tackle, are there to meet him for a six-yard loss. Clock is running with two minutes remaining in the football game, and the Bison lead 14-3. to Next week, the Sioux will be home against South Dakota, and the Bison will be home against Morningside. Second down and 15, a tall order now for the Sioux offense. Ramey, handoff inside. This is Mizzou. Has some yards. A good seven-yard gain by the Sioux fullback, who's playing probably at about half speed with that ankle injury. I know we haven't seen the real Tony Mizzou here this afternoon. Muehlhauser made that last stop again. Uh, he's had a busy afternoon defensively for the Bison. We'll hear from uh, some Bison players and head coach Don Morton and also Pat Burns after the ball game. This is Mizzou again, and look at that kid go He's across the 40-yard line. Did he get it, Ed? He's going to be close to it, Rides, with a minute and 10 seconds remaining in the ball game. Here it is again. And uh, notice the way Mizzou runs. You can tell there's something wrong with that leg, and yet he's picking his way through. The last few strides there, it looks like he's just hobbling along. And I, but, he, but he got that second effort for the first down. And Scott Shutt, number 44, is not a bad outside linebacker, and he's still being pulled for some yardage on a, a bad ankle by Mizzou. It is fourth down now. First down, Sue. First down for the University of North Dakota. You know, it's starting to lighten up a little bit, Ed. It'd be, you know, as soon as that final gun goes off, the sun will probably come out. Tell Dana to make sure we get this now. We're counting on it. One minute remaining in the football game. Handoff inside Mizzou on first down, and there goes one of the top to one of our cameras. <laughs> Flying off <laughs> into the North Dakota. window. <laughs> Flying off into the North Dakota I thought it was Santa pasture. Claus in his sleigh. Yeah, it did come right in front of us, didn't it? Well, that's another 25 bucks. <laughs> 52 seconds remaining in the football game. Second down and 10. There's a timeout on the field. Bison lead 14 to 3. We'll go to Dana Mock for some post-game interviews right at the end of the ball game on the Bison sideline. And we hope to get head coach Pat Burns, but uh, this has got to be a frustrating loss for the Sioux. They had such a ter terrific start, winning seven straight, losing last week to Omaha, scoring only three points. Today only scoring three points against the Bison. Well, they had the one opportunity. Uh, I think that's one of the turning points in the game had they scored first when they were down on that three-yard line, but that fumble cost them, uh, they could have been out in front seven to nothing, and it would have put an entirely different complexion on the ball game. It certainly would have. Let's go down to the Bison sideline and Dana Mock. Dana, what's going on? Well, there's a lot of happy folks down here, Ed. They finally beat the Sioux again one more time, and the seniors are really up and up. Fourth straight time for the Bison seniors. Back to you. Ramey across the middle. Good it's catch. complete to Kuchera, the tight end. 
It'll be short of the first down, and it'll be third down and three with 40 seconds going remaining with the in the ballgame. Going offense now, Ed. They're not yep. even going to huddle. No, they're not. We're inside the 35-second mark. Clock is running. Ramey, the quarterback, out of an eye formation. Mizzou up the middle, and he'll be close to a first down. That'll stop the clock with 20 seconds remaining. And 14-3, uh, to three, Bison lead. And Asu are going to call a timeout to stop the clock with those 22 seconds remaining. Uh, but down by uh, 11 points in uh, these weather conditions. Uh, I know you have Monday Night Football. If uh, Dandy Don was here, I think he could just about begin singing his song. Yeah. This is the fourth straight year that North Dakota State has defeated the University of North Dakota. But uh, as far as the series goes, overall throughout the years, uh, the Sioux lead in the series, 52 to 34, and there have been three ties. And as we mentioned, this is the oldest series in Division II football. The Bison came in here today with a very potent offense, bent from averaging 231 yards per game total offense. That leads the nation, hitting 55% of his passes, and uh, didn't make any spectacular plays. Actually, nobody on either team did. If there were any spectacular plays, they were made by the defense today. Ramey uh, just going ahead on a sneak, enough to get the first down. 17 seconds remaining. And, of course, you know, when you're dipping down here the last few seconds, our end zone camera, Brian Waltz, he decided to call it a day. I don't blame him. <laughs> As you see, the fans filing out of Memorial Stadium with 10 seconds remaining. Ramey back to pass, throwing long down the field, or at least trying to. It's impossible against this uh, that ball wind. just slipped out of his hands. And uh, then getting up in the air like that fluttering in that breeze. Uh, just no way any passing attack could be mounted today. No, it, uh, it was not a factor in the ball game. The offense that we saw here today was generated on straight-ahead stuff. Mizzou between the tackles, uh, nothing fancy. Jay Cox, uh, they toss it to him and let him pick his hole the best he could. And the same way for the Bison. They got outside twice on option on short yards and on fourth down when the defense was in tight. But most of it has been stark up the middle along with Molstrey and Close. It really has been uh, a smash-mouth type affair here today. And right up the middle goes Tony Mizzou, and that'll be the last play of the ball game. The Bison seniors go away in this 1984 season, never losing to... UND, and that is something not a whole lot of seniors can say. The ball game is over as both coaches will shake.